League. My name is Caleb Denby, and stepping in for Farah Kobian is Archbishop International Master Dorset Derek Shani. Thank you, Caleb. And uh, we'll be here to give you all of the coverage for today's games. Uh, the games are uh, just about ready to get underway, so why don't we take a quick look at where we stand in the division uh, and see what we have to look forward to today. Uh, so the Canada Chess Bras are our opponents today, and they stand first place in the Western Division with 85 points. Uh, uh, ranking will be hoping to turn around today, and we can turn around with a victory in today's match. And we are second place with 81 and a half points. And then trailing us are the New York Marshals and the California Unicorns, two teams we, which we've actually already faced and already beaten. Uh, so this is going to be the key matchup for us here today. Uh, and of course, the format for the Pro Chess League this year is game in 10 minutes with a two second delay. Uh, that is down from game in 15 minutes last year. Uh, there are 24 teams in the Pro Chess League split into three division. Seven of the top 10 players in the world are in there, and I think we have quite a number of those on our team uh, alone. Uh, teams from four continents, uh, it's a global chess league, and of course the teams are fighting to get into the final four, uh, which will be played in a live final with players in person against each other, but still playing on, of course, chess.com. Uh, maybe we can take a quick look at, at what our pairings are for yeah, today. Uh, of course, we are facing the Canada Chess Bras, and they have four devastating players on their team, although maybe not quite as devastating as, as our players. True. Uh, of course, Alexander Grishuk is their board one, uh, world-renowned player. He's been at the top of the, top of the game for years and years now. Uh, 2777 current rating. Uh, and number two for the Canada Chess Bras is actually Ali Reza Firuja who is a very up-and-coming player from Iran, uh, and he's been putting together some very impressive results, particularly in, in the first half of Tata Steel this year. Yeah, he, was, he was being um, very stormy. Yeah, uh, yeah, scoring some wins against some, some legendary players, and of course he's an online chess specialist, so he's one to look out for. And now board three for the chess bras is Ivan Saric, who used to be board one for the chess bras, and on that board one position, he actually scored quite a number of points and led the chess bras to, to numerous victories. And of course, the original chess bra, Eric Hansen, rounds out their team on board four, just over 2,600. And our team needs little introduction. Fabiano Caruana on board one, Lenier Dominguez on board two, Wesley So on board three, and our free agent, Liam Lee, on board four, all over 2,700. Uh, bringing up our average rating to well over 2750 at 2764. Mm -hmm. So definitely we are the favorites in this match, although yeah. perhaps this is the one team that, that could uh, give the Archbishops a challenge. Uh, um, I have to say, I thought that we were, um, con maybe um, Joffrey was going to be stepping in. Uh, yeah, uh, th these are our top four players. Of course, Jeffrey, it's, just a couple points below the enemy yeah, right now. Yeah, that's what I was but. thinking when we were talking about having Jeffrey, and I was yeah. like, well, we do have a very strong four, <laughs> the first four border. Yeah. should get the job done. Uh, this but. is definitely our A team. Uh, I don't want to waste too much more time, because yeah, the I games agree. are underway, so why don't we just jump into the actual chess here. Let's look at um, Hansen versus Fabiano. Yeah, of course, in the first round, board one plays against board four. So this is our board one, Fabi, against board four for the chess bras, Eric Hansen. Normal Lopez, wolf. Um. Yeah, we have yes, uh, Ace Roy Ace Lopez. Ace. <laughs> and yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of this D6, G6 stuff, ah, so okay. it warms my heart to see this. Uh, so black gets castled. <laughs> yeah, so far I like it all. Everything going great. Oh, you see how much um, space Black has? Just 10 moves, okay, 11 moves in the game. It feels so much um, empowering. Because, you know, in the normal, like the normal Lopez's, right. <laughs> this bishop is already like in e7. You don't really know what you're doing with this. This knight is either in b8 or in a5, and you're still trying to push for c5. Yeah, by, now, by clearing this e7 square, the knight has a much yeah, more natural home. It also feels like if white were to like have this pawn somehow magically um, close up the center then black could have a king, king side attack of while course. the queen side is also uh, under control so yeah i like this very much okay so we have a um so yeah the d file opens yeah um, i think some a move such as like queen c7 should be coming up in the next few moves yeah everything's super normal super logical and if this nice were to get exchanged, um, it's just still pretty nice. This bishop here could 
be in a better position, but also the position is very um, closed up. So yeah, and it supports the center uh, directly with e5 and kind of indirectly with the d4 square. And maybe uh, at a much later date, some pieces get traded off, and Black can kind of expand with f5 mm -hmm. and, and trying to push e4 to open the bishop. Yeah. Um, right, and so let's this is our current position. I uh, I think Fabiano has got this one. This this is. This is a um, very nice positional games, and yeah, he also has about two minutes, wait, almost three minutes more, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm Fabi, happy with this. Uh, of course, throughout the Pro-Chess we, we've seen Fabi always up on time somehow. Yep. He, he uh, definitely plays the time control the way it's meant to be played, fast and... Uh, and, and you know, <laughs> uh, threatening chess, uh, yeah. aggressive chess that, that makes his opponents uh, really spend their time and really get down on the clock. Um, yeah, let's take a look yeah. at. I kind of want to see Firuzja's games first. Firuzja, okay. Firuzja so versus Firuzja because they also played recently in Tata still, didn't they? Yeah, and I believe Wesley actually was uh, the, the first player to stop Firuzja's hot streak. He, yeah, he I, I think uh, so too. defeated um, him in, in, I think, a Queen's game it accepted. I do know that Fabi defeated him because that was a game that I wanted to do. And I think <laughs> you took it first. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't <laughs> mean okay. to. But, uh, but yeah, it was a very nice game too. Yeah. And all right, let's take a um, quick look at the opening. All right, normal Catalan, yeah, traditional just Catalan stuff. stuff. Okay, so far everything is logical. Okay, no pieces are hanging. Yeah, so this is actually pretty similar to, to how Wesley actually beat Ferruja in Tata Steel. It uh, looks he, very similar. Just, just simple chess, yeah. uh, the open C files and open D files, but then Wesley managed to, uh, in, in the Tata Steel game, just maneuver his pieces a bit better and create some uncomfortable threats for black. Uh, so that's probably what he's aiming to do here as well. It feels very nice. My one question is, where do you want this bishop to be? Do you want to like maybe go b3, bishop b2, like ideally? Yeah, that I seems mean, natural. You can't do it right now, but the, is that something, like where would this bishop want to be? Well, in the game, I think uh, Wesley actually picked g5 for the bishop, which okay. makes a lot yeah. of sense. Uh, g5 really puts pressure on the e7 bishop. It, it's a little bit uh, kind of awkward to maneuver the black pieces, and this is what we actually saw in the Tata Steel game as well. Mm -hmm. And perhaps uh, Farouj is getting getting some flashbacks of where his pieces just don't seem to, to fit onto the board. Yeah. Uh, also, mm, kind of, um, I mean, good for us, but worrisome for the chess, uh, his ah. connection. Yeah, perhaps Farouj is actually having some technical difficulties here, and that's why he's he's a little bit down on the clock. Maybe, I mean, I'm not complaining, <laughs> but um, mm. it's, yeah, it's, it's a pity that players can't play to their best. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do we want next? How's our board two doing? Uh, Lenia Dominguez against uh, the veteran chess bra Ivan Saric. This is a knight or isn't it? Uh, I I would believe that. Yeah. <laughs> I would believe okay, it. Okay. So typical. Oh, knight goes to. I like this h three knight e two. I I played it very few times, but it always was so um, so interesting and yeah. I kind of like to keep working on the center, but you don't really, you can't really get your bishop to see her in time usually. Yeah. So it's a good idea to have something like this. So of course, black has to spend some time playing h5 to, mm -hmm. to prevent g4 and knight g3 ideas, yep. and, and white uses this time to get the bishop to g2 to control d5 a little bit better. The other thing is like when there's b5, usually a4 is the way to answer um, in the long run, right? Because you kind of want to make uh, see where this pawn stands. Do you want to push it? Or if you take it, then a6 pawn is a little um, weak. All right, so so far I like it all. Yeah, so f4 it's, is how uh, white breaks in the center. Yeah, but I feel like it might have been a little too early for f4. I don't know, like if I were white, I would probably try to uh, move my queen first a little, see where I want this knight, and then try to push for f4, but... Uh, well, maybe the knight wants to, to jump out to the f4 square, and so it but, stays on e2 to, to, to kind of support that Let's break. say after f4, what are you going to do? Are you actually going to take it? Uh, yeah, maybe maybe not. Maybe I'll play g4, though, and start uh, start really pushing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. In the game, they t he did take it. Okay. Which, okay, now knight on... Um, 
Oh yeah, ta mm, tactically you can't take it. Ah, of okay. course, there's there's d6 in this yeah. position, hitting the, the bishop on e7 as well as the rook on a8. Okay, I, I think I get it better now. Yeah, so the knight does come into d4. Uh, black does uh, try and trade off these dark squared bishops, but mm. white um, probably avoids it. I don't really see it. any like big threats except for this maybe knight c6, but it's not the, like a it's not a determining factor. It's yeah, bl black definitely for. isn't getting checkmated here. Yeah, uh, and the, I I have to say I do like the placement of black's bishops here. They mm -hmm. control a, a large portion of the board, and uh, c2 is is actually under some pressure. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I kind of wanted to say is, do you, well, I kind of feel like black should be doing short castle, but it's, um, it's a little, uh, this pawn on h5 isn't really helping my mm, <laughs> decisions to make castle. Right, and, and this is part of the, the point of white's opening play, is, is playing h3 uh, and kind of baiting black into playing this move h5. Mm -hmm. it, it can often turn out to be a little bit of a weakness uh, that... Black is now having to uh, to keep track of. Uh, and so, how did the the game continue here? Um, knight c six. Wait. Yeah, yeah. I, you don't want this monster pawn to be up here, and then d six be that weak. Definitely not. Okay. So far, so good. I'm just thinking, why couldn't we, uh, White take this? Uh, perhaps he could, but then maybe there's bishop f6 in the ends, and there's uh, some threats to b2, and uh, I'm not sure that the d-pawn is actually improved. Uh, like, the pawn on d5 might actually turn out to be a little bit more weak without the pawn on d6 to, to kind of block out the, the black pieces. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. Okay. okay. So yeah, f6 is Lenny's choice to maintain the knight on e5. Yeah, the knight have kind of, it's a good idea to keep it on e5. Mm. But this is not ideally what I wanted to see. Because the, even though this bishop does uh, serve a purpose, it would be much nicer if it was, you know, in the actual <laughs> game. Right. Uh, yeah, white is, is kind of just uh, making this bishop into a little bit of a, a mm -hmm. ghost. By uh, if, if white doesn't use the, the squares, e3, d2, or c1, then the bishop is controlling kind of thin air. It's, yeah. it's not really serving a purpose. So after rooks got exchanged, now the b b5 pawn is under attack. Whoops. And and so yeah, we, we actually see uh, a ton of trades and the a players lot of them. Yeah. Uh, approach an end game here. So now I think the may the big question is is this bishop worse this knight, or vice versa? It's a difficult question, and I think it's a question that that is changed by whether or not the the queens are on the board, which is why yes. I'm pretty sure black. Uh, went for a queen trade mm -hmm. uh, pretty quickly here. Oh, uh, I like this. Trying shot. to bring in the, the bishop. Nice. And so now with the queens off the board, I think I do actually prefer black's bishop to white's knight. Yeah. Uh, with the queens on the board, of course, the queen and the knight kind of do work well together. Mm -hmm. And uh, you could have seen some threats around the black king if, if black hadn't managed to, to trade off these queens so quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, here, though, I think I like, I like black a bit more. Probably it's it's not a, a crushing advantage or anything. Uh, I, I'm expecting maybe a draw from this game, but I'm not Me sure. Me too, but I feel like Lanier is going to have the upper hand even when it ends in a draw. But I like the overall um, progression in this game. Absolutely. Uh, uh, and then I think, yeah, Bort, uh, Liam yeah. Lee against Grishuk has actually progressed pretty... Wow. There's some definite similarities <laughs> to the last game Yeah, this knight on C6 this, is... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and however, I think this one might be a little bit more preferable for white than the previous position we looked at. Um, the pawn on a4 is a little bit weak, and white is going to have to keep track of that. But uh, at the same time, the white knight on c6 is is going to stay there, and I think it's going to be a little bit more relevant than uh, the black knight or the the white knight we saw in the the previous game. Mm -hmm. And this pawn actually comes to a5, and, and the further up the board this pawn gets, the more threatening it actually becomes. Uh, there is kind of a Kind of a rule uh, that I've heard, where the further up a board, the further up the board the pawn gets, the, the more it's kind of worth. And that's because yeah. it's closer and closer to threatening to become a queen, uh, and so your opponent has to really keep a closer eye on it. And so from a5, you can imagine this pawn very easily gets to, to a6 with the help of this light square bishop, but then uh, getting through a7 might be a little bit more difficult with One that black bishop controlling it. One thing that I was thinking it. it was was 
When are we gonna play like rook e7? Rook e7? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then maybe not yeah. necessarily right now, but I kind of really want to have this rook on e7 and have my queen on c4 without so, worrying about the yeah. first rank. Why, why not rook e7 right now though? Maybe queen b5 check. Yeah, I guess queen b5 here. There's some some tactical. Well, I, I wanted to play a bishop e2, and then I thought your queen was trapped. Uh, and I was worried for a moment about knight takes d5, but I, I think I can just take your queen, and there's no knight e3 check because mm -hmm. my, my rook covers it. So what is... yeah, I'm not sure what black does after rook e7. It's a little bit confusing. Yeah. I mean, rook e7 is always a threat, and it's not mm -hmm. a bad idea to try and open some room for the king to breach. But... Um, yeah, so g3 gives, gives the king a little bit more space, uh, of course. Uh, the dark squares are not safe for that white king with that bishop on c5, but g2 seems to be a fairly nice home. Um, and I guess rookie seven black could play, could play queen c8, although it seems a little bit, a little bit shaky. Uh, so that is a, a quick look at all four of our boards. Uh, why don't we jump back to the game of uh, Wesley So mm -hmm. against uh, Alireza Ferugia, because it looks like Wesley is putting on quite a bit of pressure on Ferugia's position. Wow, the time also. Yeah, uh, Ferugia, of course, might have had some, some technical difficulties there. He, he did get back to the game eventually, but I'm not sure how much time he actually lost in, in the long run. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, Wesley seems to be up a clean pawn with more active rooks, and uh, we'll be looking to, to convert this game. I uh, Also, I'm thinking, I don't think, I'm not sure if he actually lost time, because like he was thinking for about three and a half minutes somewhere, and then another almost two minutes somewhere. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, it doesn't sound like too much, but five minutes is actually almost like half of his time. So if, if a lot of that was spent dealing with connection issues, it's, it's a little bit unfortunate for Ferugia. But here, I think Wesley has definitely outplayed him, regardless yeah, of, the of the clock on, situation. Yeah, I agree. The rook's on the seventh rank, and um, the, the one more pawn, it's... I think this game is pretty decided. Uh, yeah, of course, the time control is 10 plus a two-second increment. And all four boards uh, play at the same time. So we've got four games going on right now. And it looks like we actually have a result in one of the games. Oh, on board nice. one, Fabi has actually drawn with Eric Hansen. So uh, not quite the result we were hoping for here. Well, yeah, but I'm kind of trying to figure out where it went a little um, out of hand. Because the final position, well, Fabi um, <laughs> kind of... It's a theoretical draw, yeah, so... Yeah, but Fabi's, of course, on, on the worst yeah, end Yeah, like, like, in this endgame, this is a theoretical endgame, so bishop takes h3 is not a blunder. Yeah, the, the point is, of but course, the, the rook how? pawn of the wrong color is, is always a draw. Yep. But it, it did get a little bit a little bit scary there, I guess, for Fabi, just down a clean pawn in this endgame. We were somewhere around here when we left off, and I thought it was going pretty smoothly. Maybe I underestimated the knights were it. were rerouted. Uh, perhaps this bishop on g7 is actually yeah. a little bit more of a problem than we were giving it credit for. Uh, it does come back to, to f8, but now the Not, white pieces yeah. are starting to invade. And yeah, the, the pawn on e5 simply fell. Um, interesting. Yeah. So Eric getting getting a little bit the better of Fabi there, but Fabi holding off in that end game. Why don't we keep a keep an eye on these games that are still in progress though? Because like, a lot is, is happening. We only game because they're both in like time trouble but Grishuk is in like yeah. real time trouble. Grishuk down to 18 seconds. Yeah. Of course Liam Lee a little bit of a time edge uh, with over two minutes still on the clock and I, I really like this position for white. I think this pawn on a5 is just going to be a nagging threat that black will have to always uh, keep an eye on and this knight on c6 uh, I don't see a way to get rid of it. Uh, so definitely a lot to play for here with the white pieces and this move, rookie seven, still looks looks threatening. Of course, you don't want to allow uh, any knight e three stuff. So uh, white does have to respond to this threat. Mm -hmm. Maybe simply queen c three uh, defends the e three square and gets Maybe ready even to queen continue. queen e four, if it's doable. Yeah, I, I like queen e four, but I do want to keep the e file open so I can play this rook e seven move. Well, I, I'm, I, I really like this move. But, I was uh, thinking about if queen e4, then you're attacking the knight, so the knight has to do something. And then you could think about queen e7, and try to exchange the queens off. Without queens <laughs> off the board, you you're at, you have one more pawn, and it kind of seems a bit more clear that knight on c6 is really strong, black doesn't really have a counterplay. So, 
what I like about Queen C3 is that I think it actually does a lot of what you were saying uh, Queen E4 does. Queen C3, I think, is actually making a threat to the knight because Rook E7 will uh, force this queen off of its natural square where it defends. And uh, moves like Queen F5 aren't really playable due to this knight E7 idea. And so I, I think I, I like getting this, this Rook in here. Uh, while trading queens gets you closer to that endgame you were talking about, I, I think the black queen is awkward enough that it makes more sense to kind of push it around a, a bit more. But uh, definitely there's, there's a lot of ways to, to move forward with white here. I think uh, uh, everything is, is pretty good. Just, just make a move. Yeah. <laughs> the time is going out. Oh my god, he hasn't moved in two minutes. No! We were, yeah, we were chatting away. But uh, yeah, queen c3, queen e4, there's, there's plenty of options. So queen e4, Liam Lee does go for. Uh, but now, ooh, knight f2. And knight e7 check. This is looking a little bit strange now. There's queen h3 threats uh, to look out for. Uh, so queen f5 uh, gets rid of this but queen my, h3 threat, my, but my the, pawn. the pawn is hanging. My beautiful. Wow, I think I think things have gone slightly Well, if right I take here. on a5, can't I take on d6? Can't uh, I just take on d6? That's... Knight d3. Well, yeah, knight d3, then knight jumps to f4, check, and then bishop d6, so I guess knight... Ah, yeah, so we see knight g3 instead, and, and this uh, pawn does does fall. Some, some tactics there to look out for. Uh, this endgame shouldn't be horrible for white, but uh, it's definitely black who, who's favored now, which is rather unfortunate. Something something went wrong there. Uh, I guess there were some tactical threats we, d we didn't really notice yeah. after, after queen e4. Uh, h5 is nice, though, and, and this is looking to be pretty dead. Uh, yeah, I think I, I kind of agree with that. Flo, you want to take another look at Firuja's queen? Yeah, I Wesley think? So uh, against uh, Firuja here. Wait a second. I'm waiting. How did you get here? Uh, I'm very confused. How do you... Huh. Uh, I think Wesley is losing. A little bit. <laughs> but it, it took me like uh, a full 10 seconds to, to comprehend mm -hmm. which way the pawns were going, but this is... This, like, we were at it somewhere around, like, maybe... No, wait, Wesley is white. Wesley's winning. Hold on. I, I couldn't... Yeah, sorry. My, my brain just couldn't process where which way the pawns <laughs> were moving. Okay. Uh, of course, white <laughs> is coming on. up the board here, and that is Wesley so. And so he's he's just winning in this, this okay. game. Okay, <laughs> so Wesley won. Wesley won. Uh, for now, Asia, now, now actually, design. let's take a little bit of time to see... What? Okay, we were uh, here. Why don't, why don't we actually come back to this game? I agree with uh, Liam Lee has drawn against Grishuk, and uh, Lenier Dominguez is trying to win uh, on the final board here. And it looks like he has very good chances to. Uh, this pawn on h4 will, will be running up the board quite quickly. And yeah, he simply pushes. Uh, after king g3, this knight cannot really guard against the, the pawn queening. It, it probably has to sacrifice itself. Um, or it doesn't, and now I think Black simply is queening the game. Yay! Pawn. Well, that was a very wow. nice first round. So yeah, Lenier Dominguez uh, actually winning on board two. And so after one round of play, uh, our board four actually drew their board one, and their board four drew our board one, but then we actually won on both boards two and three. Yeah, it was so, pretty nice. Yeah, that puts us to a full three points to one uh, lead. Uh, after this first round, were there any games you wanted to, to analyze really yeah, quick before I really we, wanted we to take, take a, a, a little break here? At um, this Firuzjo's game. Yeah, because, Wesley so against like, Firuzjo. We were somewhere around here, and we were talking about how nice it is at this in this Rukand game. Right. And I thought it was kind of mm, kind of already decided, but it was really interesting how uh, Black managed to dig himself out of the hole, if that's the well, right expression. Well, he, he did end up losing this game, but it, it definitely started <laughs> yeah. to look a little bit more interesting yeah. than, than normal. But I think, uh, if we if we go through it, I think Wesley probably had it un under control the, the whole time. I mean, it looks very so, nice. Uh, just... Yeah, I, I want to pause here and say, in this Rook end game, it, with pawns on both sides of the boards, white has pawns on the queen side, black has pawns on the king side, it's not so much about the number of pawns as the position of the pawns. Yes. Uh, and white's pawns are much further advanced up the board in this case, which is why Wesley is, is simply winning here, despite black collecting uh, slightly more pawns. Yeah, I agree. I feel like if this pawn, like any of these two pawns for black were slightly more advanced, we would have had a different, um, different... Yeah, uh, and, and so black does get to advance the pawns, but uh, as we said, the white pawns are a little bit faster, and it's, it's simply too late. Yeah, it's so interesting. If, like, you make the queen now, I can simply take it. Yeah. <laughs> And now B7, you can't stop them both. Yeah, uh, it's pretty nice. Pawns are powerful. 
Yeah, and then um, the rest of it was pretty, uh, after Croquet for Czech, everything was coming. Kind yeah, of. It, it was all, all pretty forced. Yeah. Um, so that's Wesley So's big win. Uh, we saw Lenier uh, manage to win this end game with that bishop. Uh, very excellent technique from him. And I believe we're going to take a short break, and we might be back with the one and only Verujan Akobian. Uh, so stay tuned. When you visit St. Louis, you'll probably want to watch the Cardinals or the Blues. What about okay. after the game? Heading back to the hotel would be a major error. Mm -mm. Instead, boogie through the city and discover the music that gave the blues their name. At the National Blues Museum, Broadway Oyster Bar, or even the legendary Blueberry Hill. So whether you love the Cardinals, the blues, or the blues, come play with us. And you guys know I can't play this, right? St. Lou is always exploring. Be surprised. Be intrigued. Be delighted. The World Chess Hall of Fame in St. Louis is nothing you'd expect and everything you love. Three galleries highlight the history, culture, and creativity behind the game. Explore chess in ways you never imagined. It's a one-of-a-kind cultural institution where rare artifacts and world-class art play together. The World Chess Hall of Fame. Mind. Art. Experience. Is that you, Mr. Matheny? Can we get your autograph? Yeah, of course. I think it's pretty cool that you love chess so much. We love chess, too. I joined a school's chess program and got to meet a real-life grandmaster. And I got a trophy this big. One time, I played a police captain after school and checkmated him in 27 moves. Wow. I should be asking for your autographs. Check out all chess has to offer at stlouischessclub.org. Welcome to the chess capital of the United States. The St. Louis Chess Campus in the heart of the vibrant Central West End has established itself as a premier global destination for chess and is comprised of two unique nonprofit institutions. The Chess Club and Scholastic Center of St. Louis is recognized as the top chess facility in the world and plays host to all major tournaments, including... Hello, and welcome back to week five of the Pro Chess League. My name is Caleb Denby, and now Dorsa has been switched out for the one and only Grandmaster Verujan Akobian. Hi, guys. Hi, uh, Caleb. Yeah, Var, it's, it's good to have you here. Have you been following the, the league too, very closely yeah, this year? Yeah, I've been following, and uh, you know, I know that this is our biggest match, mm -hmm. you know, that we're playing against our competitors. Yeah, of course, so. this is the, the key matchup for us uh, against the Canada Chess Pros. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm glad we won the first round, 3 to 1, very convincingly. So. Uh, hopefully we can win this and uh, finish first place uh, yeah. in our division. Uh, of course, with the win here today, uh, the St. Louis Archbishops will be launched into first place in the Western Division. The Chess Bras are really the only other undefeated team in the division, so they're, they're the main competitors here. Um, in fact, why don't we take a look and see the pairings for round two to see what uh, we have to expect. Uh, their board one, Grishuk, is playing Wesley So, our board three. Uh, Ali Reza Faruja, uh moves on to face Lian Li. Uh, Fabi Caruana gets his chance against Ivan Saric, yes. and Lenier Dominguez will be taking on Eric Hansen. Eric Hansen, yes. Um, so what do you think the mismatches are here uh, in, in Well, this okay, Grishuk, Wesley So, it's a very close matchup. I mean, the Grishuk, Definitely. Grishuk, Grishuk is also very strong. Yeah. A lot of history between those two players yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Firuja also very strong, and uh, 
Uh, he had a tough game in the first game, I think. Wesley just outplayed him. Yeah. So that was a nice win by Wesley. So that's also a toss-up, in my opinion. So I think we have a clear advantage on other two boards. Definitely. Fabiano versus uh, Saric and Terlinier versus uh, uh, Hansen. So if, you know, if everything goes uh, well, we should be able to get two and a half a place in this match. All right. So, I mean, you know, I really think our uh, Fabiano and Linier would be a clear you know, clear favorite yeah. games. I definitely agree. Uh, there's something to be said, though. Uh, you know, Ivan, of course, lost in, in round one, as did Faruja, as you said. So there's there's something about the psychology of yeah. it, where they don't have a very long of a break here between rounds, and Absolutely. they're going to have to bounce Absolutely. back and recover. And Eric, Eric actually had some, some advantage. He was up a pawn against yeah. Fabiana, so, so he had <laughs> Maybe no he's chances to press. He's one to look out for. Looking at the game, yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, this is a critical match, because if we win this match, uh, basically, I, I think eight, uh, eight and a half is the magic number. Of course, right, to win the match. you so get to eight and a half, you win the match, and you get ten bonus 10 points bonus in the points, league. Yeah. So I think if we win this match, so I think it's going to be a very, very close that we will just win, you know, without much difficulties because uh, if even we get right. two and a half here, so we'll be at five and a half points. Mm -hmm. So and they will be just at uh, you know two and a half. Yeah, so it very very quickly gets into a situation where they would be needing to like sweep exactly. our team in the rounds, and you yeah. just can't do that against yeah. this lineup. Yeah, so if, yeah, so let's let's uh, wait until the results for this one. But I think uh, you know, uh, I think we're gonna looking pretty good yeah. right now. Got a yeah. comfortable advantage. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, important to note, we are fighting the Chasparaz for first place in the Western Division, and the team that does get first place uh -huh. in the division uh, actually gets a bye in the first round of the playoffs. So definitely uh -huh. a lot to play for Very here. important, yeah. So, uh, so first place will basically uh, have extra, you know, they, will have to, they don't have to play the... There, there's you know, one, few, one fewer matches that you have matches. to win. And in a knockout format, that's actually uh, mm -hmm. critical. Uh, cool. it's, it's one less chance for, for your players to mess and up. Force four and, teams uh, qualify yes. for the... Uh, so the first four teams in each division do qualify, and then I believe uh, that fifth place team, uh, one gets in based on uh, their performance rating in, in the division. So in I'm division. not sure on that format okay. exactly. Luckily, we don't have to worry don't about have it too to much Absolutely. because we're going to be... And we got uh, some moves already yeah. here. So we have moves in the game uh, Grishuk uh, against Wesley So So Wesley, uh, mm -hmm. uh, let's see, play Bishop B4. So we have a Ragozin. Of course. Uh, and... Uh, uh, now the question is, okay, we're going to take take bishop g5, one of the main lines, and uh, h6, bishop h4. Interesting. Yeah, so so uh, of course, bishop h4 and bishop takes f6 are, are two of the main absolutely, ideas. Absolutely, yeah. Bi and so bishop h4 keeps pieces on the board. It's, mm -hmm. it's a little bit more combative than, than the bishop takes Yeah, f6 this is all theory, actually. It's been uh, pretty popular lately. Black just gives up the bishop, but... Uh, uh, apparently, just you know, it's about equal. It's not that much. Uh, okay, so a quick c5. C5. Yeah, with ideas, you know, maybe at some point even queen a5. Um, uh, yeah, and, and this pawn on b7 does look undefended, but uh, it, it's not worth the time to, to capture. Yeah, I suppose. yeah, absolutely. With the king in the middle, it's probably too risky. Yeah, uh, there could be some ideas like rook b8, rook b2 even. Yeah. So now uh, d takes c5 is a little surprising to me actually. Yeah. Uh, the only idea behind it is just to be able to put a knight on d4. Of course. So that's why uh, taking on c5. So um, it does look like it kind of ruins the pawn structure, but the point is to put a knight on d4. If White can establish some kind of you know a position where he has the two bishops and uh, knight on d4, let's say pawn on f3, then he may claim a slightly better position. All right. But it's not going to be that easy to do. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. now queen Some d4. ideas of, of knight d3 maybe here? Uh, yes. Uh, so if we, let's see if we can put the knight on d3. Yeah. So I ha Oh, yeah. I'm not sure I, if we can actually we cannot, make, yeah. make analysis moves. Okay. So, yeah, knight d3 in this variation probably would have resulted into oh. bishop d3, bishop d3, and... Uh, yeah, may maybe then uh, maybe White some can, H4. Uh, yeah, maybe some H4 ideas because then you know pressure on uh, G G5. So I think probably Wesley didn't side. like that. So 94. So the point here is, that at some point you're going to have to eliminate the dark square bishop. That's a very right. important piece, the bishop mm -hmm. on G3. So you have to uh, kind of be in a situation where you can take that bishop. And um, so let's see now. Yeah, I like the patience Wesley is showing, though. Uh, just yeah. putting his pieces on good squares and, and keeping his options. Yeah, and also bishop e5 doesn't quite work. Bishop e5, bishop d4, because you're going to run into g4. Uh, g4, just removing the defender yeah. of the bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is our current position. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, a lot to think about here for Grishuk. 
Uh, I'd probably just bring the rooks to the center, the rooks to the B file as well. Rook yeah, D they are both D playing D very fast. I mean, if we just if we look at look, uh, they've played 15 moves already. Yeah. And they all s both spend about a minute, which is which is, uh, you know, remarkable. Very very fast. So so let's move on. Maybe take a look at another game. Yeah, uh, I think all four of them are are in progress right here, here on okay, the side. Perfect. So let's take a look at this game. So here we have uh, uh, Le Quangliem against Firuja. So this is a Berlin defense. So yeah, and it looks like the kind of the main line where yeah, you, you go into the end game. Yeah, main lane. You know, Le Quang is a very, very strong end game player, and uh, you know. Yeah, definitely and at, at home in, at in the home Berlin. By, by looking at the clock, you can tell that you know Le Quang <laughs> is just comfortable. Virusha is not so sure. He's not completely sure. At the moment, Black actually has a threat. Taking uh, on f3 and playing knight d4. Yeah, of course, that would be devastating so to the white position. Uh, move like c3 needs to be considered. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, okay, knight g5 play. Just stepping out of the, the f3 threat. Okay, this knight comes wait, to d4 what's anyways. going on here? Knight d4, how, how is he going to defend now c2? I mean, this is... The, oh, this is actually a, a very good question. Hmm. Um, I mean, is it, is it counting on e6? I mean, but e6... e6, maybe, maybe there's f6. I e6, mean, f6. Uh, I, I'm not sure where, where the threat is for... For white. Knight f7, just rook g8. Yeah, rook g8, and then you can even play e7, but after bishop e7, there's no real way to add more more yeah. pressure to no, this I bishop. Think, I think, I'm not sure what Firuja is doing here, because it seems like he might just be close to be lost here. I mean, knight yeah. g6 also for well, knight g6, I even have rook h6, maybe? Yeah, rook h6, uh, maybe there's knight f8, and then... Uh, f8. I know there is some kind of discovery, but I don't it, know if it's going to... Because, yeah, you know, I can also go rook g6 there and the pressure on g2. Right. So it, my it, rook might be actually quite useful. It looks slightly scary, but okay, I guess so it's, it's e7 not e7 materializing. Goes, okay. Okay, so, so now there's knight g6 after uh, after a threat, maybe. But can we just capture... Uh, I guess we can't capture on, on g5, because then takes on f8 and knight g6 will come. Interesting. Okay, so if we just take everything, I wonder what would happen here. If we take on g5, if if he takes on f8, we go king f8, knight g6 check, king f7. Yeah. Takes on h8, rook h8. At the end of that line, still the c2 pawn is not defendable. Right. Uh, white would would be an exchange up in that position though. And yeah. So definitely, there's some some so, yeah, some it's, argument it's, to be made for white. Absolutely. Position, but well, another idea here is possibly after taking on g5, knight g6. Uh, he can play knight g6 first. So what if we actually take on e7? I think this is the line that take on e7. Okay. Yeah. Knight and then e7. knight g6. Knight g6. Then I'll take on uh, on g5. G5. Rook e7. Check. Yeah, that king, looks dangerous. King d8. Bishop g5. Ah. Uh, that looks dangerous. Okay, it does this, look a little bit scary. So maybe perhaps Firuja had seen deeper than yeah. than we did. Yeah. Or this, than Lequan maybe did. This e6 causing some very serious problems for yeah. uh, for so West. This is this is this is not easy. Or not at least, for uh, uh, for yeah. Lequan. Mm -hmm. So so again it's okay, can we take on C two? Or if we take on C two then he takes on F eight check. We don't have a way to make this analysis. Uh, I don't believe so. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, yeah. So, knight c. Let's see what will happen if we take. Okay. It takes. No. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't quite go. You doesn't can draw arrows with, yeah, with yeah. the right. Yeah. So, right mouse, hmm. see, knight c two takes on knight f8. c two perhaps, but takes on f eight. King yeah. takes f eight. King is f8. forced. Knight g six seems pretty forced. King g eight. G eight only move. Uh, okay, but white has a draw. We should note that. 97. Right. 97. White has a draw in a pocket. But 97. Es especially with the mad situation. Yeah, no, no. We're we'll, probably going to have to play for a win. Uh, every draw is good for us. Uh, the match situation, yeah. every draw is good for us, basically. I mean, as long as we're maintaining that two point cushion. So, yeah, so we actually uh, do see knight takes c2. And I, I think I agree with you. He did play knight c2. This, is, this okay. is the most, uh, most challenging line. Uh, and yeah. So, how does this line. So, we take on f8, king f8, knight g6 seems like the move, king g8. And then, uh, what, what is there really for white? You can take on h8, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then knight takes e1 will, will yeah. be... Well, what, well that's the whole thing, I think, Hila, because the point of knight c2 is when you play knight g6 now, yeah. you don't have that strong threat of e takes f8 check because I can take the rook on e1. Uh, of course. And if you take yeah. on f8, I have rook takes f8. So, yeah, so knight g6 first, definitely not, not going to be Knight g6 doesn't work, so I don't know if there is anything better than taking, actually. 
I don't I don't think okay, rookie two I mean rookie two we can even come back with knight d4 if we really want to be annoying you know attacking the e rook right because I don't think you'll have squares on the e file e6 is covered e5 yeah, is covered uh, e4 guess. is covered <laughs> and, and you only yeah. have e1 and e3 available mm -hmm. and I can just keep playing annoying with this knight c2 annoying with knight c2 uh, so and rookie three it might be worth noting that that then this kind of blocks the the bishop's uh, development yeah uh, with, with no, the I think three. he has so to take on f8 he has to take on f8 king takes f8 Okay, there are some other options such as knight um, knight f e six check. Okay. King f seven. Mm -hmm. Something like bishop d two. But yeah, I'm not we, sure. We, we will not even have to be in hurry to take any of the rooks because they're still fort. Right. So <laughs> we have additional moves. So that that line is actually probably very dangerous to go for. Yeah. for white because after we take the rook in that line we still have rook and two pawns so we have sufficient compensation so i think most likely take take knight g6 king g8 does he have and to there, can he can draw. he can he play something like rook e7 there okay okay i'm not this sure is we're about to find out we're about to find out absolutely so rook e7 there i don't know if there's actually a threat can the i just... idea 96 but uh, yeah, knight, knight e6 threatens, uh, threatens the g7 rook h7, pawn, yeah, rook yeah. h7 with, with defense. And so, so you think we should take the knight or take the rook on a1? That's uh, the question. I like taking the knight. It just gets rid, of, it gets rid of an attacker, and then uh, the rook on a1 rook is still, still on Rook is still on yeah. pre. So. And then things like rook h6 are, are also going to be coming. <laughs> this to, is a wild one. Though. Yeah, this, this is, is a really, really wild one. Some tactical Guys, stuff I mean, for, this is just like... Yeah, this is. I don't, I don't think Firuja is going to go for a draw. No, definitely. He lost the first game, mm -hmm. and I mean three one down. I don't know. I, I he's a fighter. I think he's going to try to go for it. I'll be I'll be slightly surprised if he goes for the perpetual again. He can make a draw here, guys, with knight g six check, king g eight, ninety seven check, king f eight, and just force a draw. But I don't think I don't think he's going to do that. He might he might take a chance here, but again, but this might work out even better for us because. He might be overpressing. You yeah, know? Uh, with, with the pressure that we've put on in round yeah. one, getting this lead, uh, uh, definitely the chess bros are going to be looking to play a very combative, combative chess and maybe take some risks that they absolutely. Take. Yeah, three one is a, is a nice nice lead here. Um, so uh, yeah. yeah, this is a lot to be decided in this game. I think actually Lenier Dominguez has a very comfortable position against Eric Hansen that I'd like to take. Lenier a look at. Dominguez, let's see here. Okay. So, Lanier Dominguez so uh, is white. Yeah, you, you against see this knight on a5 versus this bishop on, on e6, and yeah, I think this, this is the key is, difference. This is definitely this uh, better for Lanier. Knight uh, bishop is strong, stronger than the knight. First of all, knight is misplaced. There are some serious, could be some serious issues with the king here as yeah, well. Of course. And also, by the way, move like knight c6 doesn't solve your problems. Bishop d5. Yeah, bishop d5. Losing also, exchange there. Yeah. Knight b7, bishop. It's yeah, this looks very, very <laughs> nice. Let's just see how Lanier managed to get such a nice position oh, out of the wow. opening. So uh, I, I mean, he I is a, nice he, he is a e4. So this mm -hmm. is a Rui Lopez. So Lanier is very well prepared in theory. So it's uh, yeah, no I, surprise that course. he just. Uh, uh, that's that's one of the huge advantages of of these twenty seven hundreds over twenty six hundred players. Better prepared yeah. in openings. I agree. Yeah. So. F you know, you may think like, what's going on? The bishop on a2 is blocked, but the problem is white wants to play d4 very quickly, and um, and again, knight is stuck on a rim. Right. So and yeah, uh, we saw that knight in the current position. Even yeah, absolutely. No, this is clearly clearly better now for white. Strong knight on d4, pawn on d5, so bishop f6, and now boom. Wow, the, the tactical That's shot. pretty. That's very pretty. Nice yeah. tactic, and now gaining uh, the control of the lines could be e7 threat is devastating, so it has to move the bishop. Uh, has to move the king of course. to prevent the threat, and now bishop e6, planting the bishop in, queen h5 coming up. Bishop f5 is a deadly threat here, by the way. Yeah, uh, you have to do something about it. h6, bishop h6 wins, so he had to do something. Bishop d4, bishop e3, and that's how we got here. Rook f8, consolidating, rook on a8, only one not in the game, so he just consolidated, and yeah, so just a couple of more moves. Choice. c5 was played, bishop d5, beautiful move, cutting up the knight now. <laughs> Knight is just caught off and desperately wants to come back into the game. That's why Eric played rook c8 to be able to call bishop knight c6 and now rook e6 Ooh. by linear. And yeah, this that, is, that move hurts to see. Yeah. The point of this move is if you take on b2, now bishop e4 is going to come in with a threat of h7 hanging and 
G6. Yeah, D6 is hitting yeah. it as well. Uh, I mean, what what does black even play here? Like queen f5, I suppose? Queen f5, well, I think then just, just take, take rook d6 and just... Yeah, just, just w win, win this uh, yeah, end game, which hopeless, is yeah, much, much hopeless better. Idea. So very nice technical game by uh, Dominguez here. He's ahead on the clock. He's, I think he's just winning here. I don't think he's going to let this one slip. I, I tend to uh, agree. Yeah. And actually, and we, we do game... have a little bit of a surprise. Okay. Liam Lee uh, has officially drawn uh, Ferugia. So oh, it looks like, so that's what happened. Yeah, okay. he, he did go for the A little the bit repetition. of a surprise, but okay, we'll take it, right? Yeah, okay. uh, as so we said, that... uh, no, we, we can definitely start drawing games. Absolutely. Plus every, two advantage. every draw uh, brings us closer to that uh, magical number, 8.5. Uh, uh, so eight now we're three and a half. Of course. With three and a half points now, it's a good result. So let's take a look to see what Fabi doing. We haven't looked at his game yet. So he's playing Saric, yeah? So Yes. And so we have some sharp... Uh, yeah, this one looks looks to be rather crazy. Yeah, so this was a sharp uh, Nidorf, looks like. Mm -hmm. So, oh, oh. okay, very sharp. Okay, so very sharp Nidorf, H3. So all out, Saric lost the first game, so he's... Yeah, definitely. Also determined uh, to a lot to prove get, here. Get some points. Two. Knight g6 came in. Castle a5. Interesting that Fabi is castle long and also playing on that side, trying to fix. Uh, yeah, you know, there's the rule: don't touch the pawns in front of yeah, your yeah. king. But in this case, Fabi is actually preventing Black from opening Absolutely. files. Absolutely, he's pressing. Yeah, because now you cannot play b5, get counter play. Okay, you gotta watch out for rook c3 though. Of course, Black is just ready to take and play bishop c6, bishop b6 yeah. here. So now the queen defends laterally mm -hmm. to for c3. Bishop c3. c6, knight d5. And, H4. Yeah. And, and now that Interesting. H4. Black's kind of locked down on the queen side, and, and Fabi tries and open Fabi, up on the okay, queen side. Okay, A5 was hanging also, so he decided ah. to sacrifice a pawn. G5 by Saric. F4, wow, my bold, goodness. Bold stuff. What's happening what a crazy here? Game. Bishop F2. Knight okay. D4, I don't know, yeah? this is So yeah, Fabi is, is sacrificing many pawns now. But, uh, He's but officially <laughs> down, down, down three. Okay, three down pawns. three right now, guys. <laughs> He's down three, but... G5, uh, G5, my goodness, what's going on here? Bishop G5. Okay, so that makes four pawns? Four pawns down? Okay, up, back up to three. Back up three. Just just for those So knight three is important because it prevents knight f5. Definitely. Rook c5. Rook f8. Okay, so some threats to c2, <sighs> but, but Fabi takes an f4. My, I don't know, this is, I'm worried about for Fabi here, to be uh, honest. I feel like... It yeah, was is, a big gamble, you know? Is Rook takes c2 uh, yeah. uh, a move? Uh, you're threatening to, to play queen b2 mate. Uh, of course, you can play take, bishop takes take, c2, but then rook takes again. Take, take rook b4, I guess? Take, take rook b4. But it seems like I just... It's, it's it seems very, very dangerous. dangerous. Yeah, I think he just played very, very risky, you know? And... Uh, uh, yeah, and I think this is something we've actually seen from Fabi a little bit uh, in the Pro Chess League so far. He, he really is out to, to score full points, yeah, uh, yeah. no matter the, the risk. And I think in the time control of, of 10 plus 2, it's, easy, yeah. it's, it's so fast that yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of times both sides are, are making a lot of mistakes. We've seen Fabi in losing positions before, but, but definitely he there's a lot around, of chances yeah. here. Yeah, so, yeah, it's not over. I mean, with two minutes on the clock, I mean, Saric can still make a mistake. I mean, objectively, I think he's winning here. Right. But uh, uh, not so simple, you know, let's put it this way. Not so simple here. Yeah. Uh, I, I Rook think C2 should be played, I think. Yeah, Rook C2, C2. and I'm, I'm not sure what else uh, Black can really do. This knight on E3 is hanging, so if you don't play yeah. Rook C2, you have to solve this problem somehow. Yeah. You don't want to play knight takes E2, because then knight F5 would be a strong move, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I, yeah, it's not easy. I yeah. can tell you. I mean, we're not <laughs> under pressure. I mean, we're looking at it. We still don't see that the exact uh, way Black can in. I, you know, perhaps. Yeah. yeah. The, the good news for Fabi is, is Ivan Clark is actually is still he's kicking. thinking here. Yeah, Clark is still <laughs> he's kicking. Trying to figure it out. Uh, yeah. And it's not the type of position you can figure out in a minute and forty Absolutely. seconds. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, all right. So let's maybe switch to. So we have only three games remaining. Should we yes. look at the Vesley So game to see? Uh, absolutely. Okay, so Vesley is playing Grishchuk. So this is the game that uh, we had uh, the Ragozin. Yeah, Let's see how they got here. We're expecting this uh, to be one of the closer matches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we, board one Grishchuk. Yeah, we're gonna be. We need to go fast a little bit because of the, the time control yeah, and all the action. So up. we don't have that much time for a very in-depth analysis here. So so we, this is where we left it off. Yeah. Ninety-four was played. Queen e seven, and c four. So 
you know, Grishuk tried to get rid of the, the backward pawn. And again, Wesley is going to take that bishop at some point. You cannot allow opponent to have two bishops, so... Okay. And okay. So that, if we do see him capture. Oh, and interesting. Knight H5. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is a problematic. This is not very good for Black, I think, because Knight is misplaced some weaknesses here. So Grishuk and is the slightly e better. The E pawn definitely more valuable than the B pawn here. B6. Okay. The threat was Queen G6. Queen G6. So, uh, so the Knight okay, does come back into the game. Oh no, it comes back to E6. Okay, white maybe. is still okay. a little bit better, Kayla, because F4 is coming. Yes. Yeah. So. I don't know. I still a little bit unpleasant, yeah, but some knight of five threats is, as well. It's uh, so ninety six is played. Ninety six. Wait, did Wesley calculate the king and pawn in game? Because this is, this is tricky. Because I, I think the king and pawn in game should be okay. Be okay. At, at first glance. Um, yeah, because the pawn is not on a. If the pawn was on a four, it's probably lost because you get it fixed. Yeah, of so course. That's actually a big, big. Uh, so you probably calculated. So again, one one minute and thirty seconds remaining. So it's not easy for Grishuk. It's a big moment here to make a decision. What right. do you do here? I mean, it's not easy. Uh, there, there's a move knight f five, which could force bishop versus knight, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so he does take on g six instead and goes for this knight end game where uh, the black pawn structure is, is a, quite a bit worse. Actually. Yeah. So f yeah, for example, if the pawn was on a four after capture, capture king e four, white would just just be winning, or king yeah, d four, white would be winning. But now black has capture, just enough tempo. Yeah, capture, ch capture king d four, b five. I mean, this needs to be calculated. Or king c five. Right. It's oh, and and perhaps it, it oh, was wow. not calculated well enough. Let's see now. So what if the move a four for black instead? A four, but a four a three. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I can't really waste did, my. Did my Wesley just misplay, miscalculated this? Because I was Seems worried like about it. You know, I was worried about <laughs> going to this end game because. Okay, is there? Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so he does go for a four, but now a three. A three. Is yeah. is g four perhaps on the cards for black? Is, is this his idea to try and? G. Yeah. But take. Uh, take then g five. H four. Uh, I have a lot yeah. of moves. Then I guess b5. King c5. Yeah, I take, and then I, I was trying you to get, march there, get around to get But it seems like by the time you take all this. Yeah. Hmm. I think he misplayed it, Caleb. It doesn't look good. It does not this look good. This is a problem, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So h5, h5 is h5 his h5 idea. I, I like so h5. He, he's preparing yeah. g4, maybe. and then. Uh, so also, or, he's also not he's trying to do this. If h4, he might take, take and play g5. You're giving him Takes the opportunity. H4, to G6, H3, <laughs> and okay, so King oh, E4. King E4. Okay. That's not the move I expected. Um, now, now a move like B5 seems a lot more reasonable to my eyes. B5, King here, take, take. A3, King C3, take, King B3. Uh, it's not quite in time. Not quite in time. Not quite in time. Okay, so he gonna he's gonna have to do something. Um, H four. Important to note, uh, Fabiano actually did manage to turn around this he won, game yeah? against Ivan and, and has we'll, uh, we'll, defeated. We'll, 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 we'll look at that. So that's yeah. that's another point. So I, we're at four and a half right now. Yeah, maybe we should stay with this this game a little bit longer though to this, see how this one. This one, yeah. Let's out, take yeah. a look. H three. Uh, so I think this is the, the last game kind of still in flux. I, I will mention Lenny Dominguez does look to be beating Eric beating Hansen, Hansen quite, quite comfortably. Okay. Um, so this, is, uh, this is, there's, is, there's a lot riding on this one, to be sure. Okay, so, okay. Uh, so now G5. G5. This breaks up the, the white pawns. I think we actually calculate this. Yes, yeah, important to note that the H pawn, uh, if it gets to H2, it's, uh, a draw. It, it's a draw. I think it's a draw, yeah. And in fact, it, it looks like that might that end game might not even it's happen. It's a draw, because, yes. Uh, He's pl in Looks like three one, Caleb. All right. Uh, why don't like we switch back to, to Lenny A's game to see how uh, this is wrapping up? But it's safe to say Wesley yeah. so oh, has has the draw in yeah. hand. Here. Yeah. Um, so Queen B four. Oh yeah, I thought they finished it. Okay, so yeah. still. Uh, important to note that Knight yeah. actually never made it off the A five square. Uh, Lenny oh. just went and picked it up with his. Lenny just so sacked. He's, okay. He's up a full piece. So the only issue is just you need to get rid of the C two pawn. Once the C two pawn is gone, this game is over. I would just Definitely. I would just push the A pawn here yeah. if I was Lenny here. Just Bishop push. C six as well looks looks pretty devastating. Very, so Bishop C nice six is played. Rook C eight uh, is a nice little in between move. Now maybe a Queen B seven. Okay. 
and uh, yeah, bishop e4. That's it. And that's the, it. this pawn is dead, and, and so is the game. Rook takes yeah. c2, and there's there's nothing Rook left to play Rook takes c2, yeah. And yeah, just queen, queen d5, queen centralize. D5. There's no removing the defender tactics. That's it. Uh, that's it. Th this game is over. Lenier is up a full piece. Perfect. Okay, Perfect. this game is officially over. Lenier has won. Uh, and we do actually see this queen versus pawn end game on the board. Yeah. Uh, and wow, excellent. And this is a dead draw. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Yes. So that's three to one. Three to one again. In round two. And uh, now we can, uh, you know, three to one is very, very huge win. And now basically, two and a half will clinch the match. Yeah. The, with the one round to go. The score is six to two. Of course, eight and a half is is all we need, and we have yep. uh, two rounds to score two and a half points. And uh, so heroes for this round were Fabiano and Dominguez. Yeah, Fabiano and Lenier. Are and there any games did, you, you absolutely want yeah, to take a look at? How did Fabi turn this? Oh around? yeah, this, this one is definitely worth taking. Let's see how that. how he turned it around because. We thought it was really dangerous, uh, so he did play rook c2. Okay, uh, yeah, I, I think that was black's best option. Uh, uh, so we did see the game here, and then after rook f4 was when we were looking. Okay, so he did went for this, and rook b4, and again, you know, at the time situation, if it was not easy, so knight f3 now. So pressure on g5. Pressure on g5, queen g6, knight d5. Rook b7. Yeah, Fabi just starts picking up some pawns. Knight c3, there is no mate. Queen e4, now Saric and... Ooh, check. Oh, now queen c8, and, and all of a rook sudden... Rook g5. That's that's a nice sacrifice. Uh, of ah. course, if, if pawn g5, there's rook takes f7. Rook takes right? f7, knight g5. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic tactic, yes. Uh, with the idea uh, of wow. the knight on g5 forking the king and no, the this queen. Now, this is over. And yeah, Mate that, on the board. Wow. Uh, wow. How, how quickly it can turn around. Very uh, nice. Very, very game. nice. Uh, very nice. Uh, that key move, rook takes g5 there. It's probably this This was a blunder, but uh, maybe knight c3 check? I don't know. But Yeah, uh, I don't know if it, it's over just yet after rook takes b7. It, it feels like black hasn't done enough wrong to be dead lost, but maybe it's just... But it feels like it's shifting, yeah? So it, it is definitely shifting. Yeah. So, yeah, this was very nice. And Dominguez... He had a, such a such a nice position, and uh, I feel like Grishuk uh, perhaps was winning. Yeah, something felt wrong about this. this he, end he, game he probably for, should for have Wesley not Sun. allowed uh, the pawn to get on h3. I feel like here. Yeah, so maybe it felt like, and I think Wesley mm. realized that so here, a3, h4. So here, maybe f4. Uh, f4. Yeah, I'm yeah, actually, not totally certain, but. Or, or h3, no? Ah, h3 is a, a, a very cagey move. Uh, so, because if you play, uh, okay, but let's say you go here, mm -hmm. I go here, you have to play b5, yes. so we get this position. And so, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. I, I think black is, black is still, okay, yeah? still in time. This pawn on f3 actually kind of yeah, works as yeah. a bit of a shield for, yeah. for black. Black is... In fact, black is queening black first. Black is queening first, and maybe we're trying to win. Wow. Well, uh, maybe it was... Yeah. Uh, and again, once again, he couldn't have played h4, we think, because of this, this, and this move. Yeah, of course. Uh, Wesley threatening to create pass pawns on both now sides of the here, board now. And you are in the square, actually, but the problem after the capture, f4, we are in the square, but this yeah, there's, guy there's comes the second side. The of second, the board to look out second for. break comes in, and uh, and a4 pawn is further advanced that you queen actually first before black can get to queen. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so some very nice uh, defensive play from from Wesley So to to get the draw in this game. Then. Absolutely, um, absolutely, because this is so very uncomfortable. Because yeah. once f4 comes in, it's it's a very, very uncomfortable position, actually. Well, why don't we take a quick look at the results for round two and uh, see where we stand now. Of course, the final score uh, after two rounds is six points for the St. Louis Archbishops, two points for the Canada and Chess And we did Brods. win on those two boards. Remember what we were talking about? Yeah, uh, the, the predictions were, were actually absolutely right. Uh, Grishuk and Feruja both uh, playing Wesley So and Liam Lee to, to a level game, ending in a draw. And then those two boards where we thought we had a, a slight edge, Fabi Caruana and Lenny and Dominguez, both getting the job done, defeating their opponents in round two. Uh, like we said, eight and a half is the magic number. Just two and a half points left to score in the final two rounds should be a, a very easy task for these four uh, incredible players uh, on the St. Louis Archbishops. Um,
with that in mind, uh, we are just waiting for the next round to get underway here. Why don't we take uh, a look maybe at our round three pairings and make round some, three some more predictions. Absolutely. Let's take a look. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll have those in just a moment. Uh, of course... Uh, so we need two and a half points from eight possible games. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it should should be pretty pretty easy to do, I think. Yeah. Um, so basically, we need to. Uh, yeah. I think that's, that's, yeah. That's uh, it's time to start playing uh, practical chess, exactly. getting some more Every draws. Every draw brings mm -hmm. us closer. Yeah. And I, I will say, in rounds three and four, that's where this team has really had the biggest advantage because our board ones uh, get to play their their higher rated players, and our board fours get to play their lower rated players, and that's really where the mismatch shows. Yeah, but our um, board three and four are also very. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Uh, just, but yeah, we saw in round two maybe on those first two boards yeah. for the chess bras they had a fighting chance. But now as they they start to move up towards Fabi and Lenny, this is Fide it, ratings, by the way. If you yeah. guys watching, this is uh, you know who is watching. This is Fide ratings actually. Uh, so here see, we, we see we'll go the through it. Disparency, yeah. yeah, in the rating. On Definitely, the, especially the, the average bottom. rating. We have an eighty point uh, edge. Eight. Um, oh, yeah, so almost eighty point. Yeah. Grishuk, uh, their board one now plays our board two, Lenny Dominguez, uh, Eli Reza Ferruja has his shot against Fabiano Caruana, uh, their board one, or their board two against our board one. Uh, Ivan Saric uh, has to fight Liam Lee, and Eric Hansen will be taking on the one Wesley and only so. Wesley So. <laughs> yeah, it's a very tough, but I feel like this is a situation for uh, Chess Bros that they're going to have to go all out. Yeah, this is definitely the round yeah. where they, they need to score as many points as possible. Uh, they need something like three, three, three and a half one. points. They need like to, to win to this three this one to even have a chance, you know? Uh, I definitely agree. Because otherwise it's just going to be extremely difficult because, uh, yeah, they need to, but I don't know. It's, it looks, you know, our team is playing really well and we, we haven't lost a game, which is always nice. Yeah, that's that's very true. Yeah. Uh, it's so always nice when, you know, you're undefeated, undefeated, you know, because it's harder to defeat you when you're undefeated <laughs> for a while, you know? I will say, though, yeah. uh, it's not as though the chess bras haven't had any chances. They've definitely they had, had some very good they positions, chances, but yeah. uh, they just haven't been able to, to convert like so far. Sarich against Fabiano felt like he... Um, yeah, and then even Eric Hansen against Fabi uh, was, yeah. was up, that, up a, pawn. Uh, up a full pawn. He was pawn clearly in up a pawn. Game. He was, he was, he was uh, pressing Fabi, but he couldn't convert it. So, yeah, this is a big match. So, again, uh, we need two and a half points to clinch the victory, and uh, and that will put us in a very good position to be first yeah. in our division. Um, of yeah. course, th there's only seven weeks in the Pro Chess League schedule. This is week five, mm -hmm. and the Chess Bros are the only other undefeated team in the Western Division. Uh, and so if we defeat them here today with that 10 bonus points, uh, we'll be kind of launched straight into the lead in the entire Western Division. And with some solid play in the final two rounds for us, uh, I think we're actually playing the Krakens and the Capybaras, who are not having the best season. So it should be a, a slightly easier pairings for us to, to round out the season. And, uh, and then we should be launching yeah, the And again, they're, they're, those teams are good. They're all GM lineup, but they're not going to have heavy eaters like Ali, uh, yeah. Firuja or Grishuk. Grishuk and Firuja, or, especially. Uh, this, so. of course, is, is next week's schedule. Uh, so if you want to join us at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, that's 12.30 St. Louis time here. Uh, yeah. We are against Great the Argentina coach. Krakens. Unfortunately, we will not be doing live coverage of that week, as the Cairns Cup will be going on. But you're welcome to follow along live. Uh, Chess.com should be doing a stream for it, and you can follow the games for yourself uh, on Chess.com. Uh, follow our, our top players as they, they take on the Krakens. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Uh, well, we're just waiting for round three to get underway here. Uh, and and possibly this could... Uh, yeah. In the last, uh, I mean, they, they would still play. They, they still if play the round four. Decided, they still play. Uh, of course, your actual match score is what counts oh, for your division score. standings. I see, I see, uh, I see. Each point that you score in the match goes towards your total oh, score. Total in, score. In the oh, division. that's how they do. Okay, okay. Yeah, uh, and then of course, with the win, you get ten bonus points added on, and that's so, that's so how. So if we if we get to, to, to eight and a half, we get the ten bonus points already. Yes. And plus, we so will get if you get to eight and a half, your score goes eight to eighteen and a half. But then every point you score beyond eight and a half still gets added to your score, okay. and we definitely could use that extra buffer. As the chess bras have shown, they are ahead of us at the moment. They're right? they're actually slightly. a few points up, and they've been maybe slightly better. They won at, a couple of big matches. Yeah, uh, yeah. scoring uh, or kind of running up the score against the the weaker the weaker teams. teams. Uh, that's where they've kind of excelled. Uh, but now uh, against against the real deal, they're, <laughs> they're struggling a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The round three is about to start, and yeah, it's. Uh, for Chess Bros, it's a must-win situation. They, they need to win a match, and yes. they need to win it big. 
Uh, they need yes. to win like three games. So I think. if they uh, win both matches, let's say, you know, they still not going to be. It's not going to be enough. Yeah. Because we will have nine points anyway. Even if they score like two and a half points in, in both rounds, we're, we're going to win the match. We're going to win so the match. Nine they to need set nine to seven. They need something close to it to a. Sweep so we to get are at plus game. four, you know, in the chess yeah. language. So we're plus four right now. So they're going to need to equalize, get four wins somewhere, and not lose any. So yeah, of course. Very, very hard. Uh, do you actually want to take a look and see how Lenny A uh, managed to, to, to convert, convert this game against sure. Eric Hansen? I think that's the one game we kind of haven't fully taken a look so at So we left here. off when he had a complete domination after this yeah, we had this six move. Yeah, rookie six. And G6 is G6 what uh, came Eric. Eric chose. So, okay. I'm, okay. Lenny A probably could have just taken on F6, taken on D6 too. Yeah, yeah. that, that endgame's... Uh, totally winning. It's tough to count the number of advantages yeah. White has here. This this e-file also proving to be yeah. very relevant. Yeah, the problem is the king is also weak here. Yeah. So it's like you're dominating and also the, there, there are issues with the king. Uh, and yeah, this knight is actually just totally trapped on a5. And, yeah. and okay, so that's how we, we arrived at, at the position on the board. Uh, just a few yeah, accurate moves the from Lenny A. The knight the became show. a decisive uh, factor in this game. Yeah, the, just the knight moved to a5 in the opening and, and never, stayed there until never, Yeah, that's an example for you guys, you know, knight on the rim. <laughs> so, and uh, just never came back. Uh, okay. Very, very accurate at the end also, Lanier. Just, just, just the only thing is just a C2 pawn, so just have to eliminate it and, and just manage to do that. Perfect. Uh, all right, so so I guess they have a little bit longer break. I guess uh, I think that's that's like probably half, what's going on. It's like a on. half time. It's, right? it's a little bit of a half yeah, time. Half uh, time. <laughs> so I think though that the game should be getting should underway be before yeah. too much longer. We yeah. we've been talking for a while, uh, so they must be close to, to getting underway. And there in we fact, go. We got it. The we games, got the games have just started. just started. So again, we have Lanier against Grishup again, super solid Lanier. Yeah, with uh, white. And, wait, Lenya, did he win the first game too? Or I, yeah, so he's he, he's doing really well. Huh? I think he is. He, I think he, he is, did win he round is, one. Uh, he's our uh, heavy hitter in this match. I think yeah. he won the first two games. Beat Saric, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, of course those those were our round three pairings. Yeah. Here we have Lenny against Grishuk. Yeah, he beat um, Saric and now he beat Hansen. So yeah, now he he's beat Saric and, and Hansen. Two guys. That being said, though, this is this is probably the board where uh, yeah. the, the chess bras have the biggest chance to win, which is yeah. kind of crazy to say against Lenny and Dominguez yeah. scoring two points already. But uh, this is this is where they need to make it happen. And uh, this looks like some more opening theory. Nydorf, Sharp Nydorf. And I mean, no surprise, I mean, Grishuk is not going to play some Spanish or something and expect he's going to outplay Linier, so he's yeah. going for. Sharp stuff here. Sharp and, stuff uh, and fast time control. That's yeah. that's what the Pro Chess League is about. Um, so we see knight b6, this d5 pawn under a little bit of pressure. Uh, how do you want to deal with this? Maybe queen a5 is, is possible. A5 but is a possibility. Um, maybe even uh, there's some knight a5 ideas. Knight uh, I'm a5, not knight b7. totally sure. Uh, it, it looks if we play c4, then maybe yes. rook c8. C4 yeah. doesn't, doesn't feel quite right. I don't want right. to play c4 with the king yeah. on c1. If my king was on b1, I would have mine probably. It's a little bit, a little yeah. bit easier to, to swallow. So there's if also queen b4, you can't play knight d5. Yeah? yeah. Bishop g5 might, might be a possibility as well. And, and just taking... Sometimes you can also, I think, give up the pawn, you know? So he yeah, played c4. Okay. Interesting. So I guess after rook c8, uh, Lenier's idea might be to continue with queen b4. But what's the plan if he just takes on c4? If he just takes on c4. Rook c8, ah, knight a5? Ah, knight f5 looks looks challenging. B5, knight c6. Yeah, and we've seen this knight come to c6 numerous because times. Because again, he's one move this, away. This he puts that king on b1. Yeah. With the knight on a5, he's gonna have a nice grip on this position. Yeah, so Grishak has to make something happen because now. Because you also have to watch uh, out for c5 at some point. Yeah. C5 breaks. So, so rook c8 was very natural, and, and we'll see his plan. Yeah, it was. Ah, it was in fact actually knight d5. Knight d5. Did he miss this? Uh, it's slightly unclear. Maybe after knight, knight d5, five. Pla or Lenny is planning to give up the bishop, just play king b1, and then... Knight d3, queen e3. Yeah, no, but a5, but a5 is a5 hanging. hanging. You don't have time to take b7, I guess. It, this looks slightly strange to me. I'm not sure what the, the tactical justification is here. Uh, maybe bishop g5. Uh, bishop g5 look, looks like a reasonable move to me. Uh, you're just planning to... Uh, to capture on f6, and then knight b7 and knight d6 could yeah. come. So uh, bishop g5. Yeah, so that is actually the move we see. And Again, white desperately needs to put the king on b1. If he yes. gets that in, <laughs> then he's just going to be very happy. So 
And you know, the, the position opened up a little bit, and that might play into White's position because of the bishops. Yeah. So. Uh, and actually, I, I think White just might be tactically trying to win d6 here. Well, now b7 um, is on pre. Yeah, b7 is on pre. Uh, you, do have to be, is... you do have to be careful with bishop h6 stuff if you're White, though. You can't get too crazy taking, you're right, taking you're all, right. all You need pawns. that king b1, yeah? yeah king, so, so many scenarios you yeah. need that. So, okay, so probably so he's going to play king b Knight b7, b7. Is, is inserted. Maybe now knight takes d6 and then king b1, uh, taking advantage of a pen. Wow. Okay, this is some powerful play here. Yeah, very tactical Ooh. stuff. And Lenier has done it with and using less than a minute on his clock. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, this is... This is like, yeah. Unless you've analyzed this. I mean, otherwise, <laughs> how do you play so quick? This is some, some very, very strange. Sometimes, strange you know, I guess if you, if you feel, you know, you... Yeah, you just you kind of yeah. play what feels right and, and let your intuition guide you. But, Absolutely. But this is... Uh, some very combative chess Absolutely, uh, for Lenier. Yeah. So the queen is attacked. I, I imagine uh, black must play something like queen c7 or queen d7. Um, but then I think knight takes d6 is is white's idea, followed by king b1. So if, if so if queen c7 here, yeah. so we're going to take on d6. That's my plan. And if bishop takes... King b1 is king my b1, idea. If bishop f b4... Yeah. Seems possible. Maybe instead of uh, do you think well, maybe instead of king b one, I'll, I'll play bishop takes f six. Takes queen d six. Yeah, and queen d six is my idea. Then we trade, and then I have six hanging. And then I have yeah, six everything hanging. is everything is okay, falling. White is better there. Yes. Okay, that's probably what he wants to do. Yeah, because if queen c seven, you, you try to go prophylactic king b one. I think it just takes on b seven, and then you take on d five. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure that's that's what White's really aiming for here. Bishop b seven block is up upon in fact. There. Yeah, and, and it, the position stays closed. Yeah, and what White wants and you to do want is, to open, is the open the center. Absolutely, the because you have the when you have the pair of the bishops, you want to open up the position. So okay, so I we guess. do see queen c seven, and yeah, bishop f six immediately ah, okay. is actually his idea. Um, saving ah, some time, and the knight takes uh, oh, bishop h6. Line. Wait, bishop h6? Mm, simply bishop g5 back, right? Ooh, takes. Ah, there's 96, by the way, you have. Ah, uh, 96? Probably 96 first. And really? Then bishop g5. Okay. Okay, well, bishop g5. I, I just like playing bishop g5 and then. Because if bishop g5 takes takes queen g5, queen b7, then. Queen b7. Yeah. Okay. But you can have that position with the knight on. Sacrifice the knight on d6. Interesting. Very combative chess, as as we've said. And it's interesting yeah. that knight takes f6, knight d6. Anywhere you go with a king, I take on c8 with check. You don't have time to play. Yeah, see, king e7, it's a check. Otherwise, actually, bishop h6 is... Yeah, so, so bishop takes d6 is, is forced. Yeah, and, is, and now this has gone white's way. This definitely, is, this, this is, is what white was aiming for. pleasant for white. Um, Slightly. I don't think it's a, a crushing advantage or anything, but White has navigated the, the complications, yeah. and now the rooks are, are on the open D file. Yeah. Uh, some natural development and, you know, and, and a lot of weaknesses. And, and now rook takes, now he has to pull 97, now bishop E2, simply. Yeah, bishop E2, the, the rook comes to D1, and this is, this is a nice edge, I think. Yeah, bishop E2, double the rooks. Double up the rooks, and mm -hmm. at some point you want to play C5 here too. Yeah, definitely not, not, uh, not super Maybe easy B4 for four here. Still. Okay, look, B4. B4, control. okay. Can get good control. King B2 maybe? Yeah, the only thing we have to watch out works. for A5 break, yeah. Because black might get the A5 to attack. But, you know, even sometimes these positions, if we play B5, A5, I mean, if we play B5 then... Knight gets a c5 score, so right. you do have the problem on b6, but... Yeah, I maybe, think the problem for White start with is, b3. is, yeah, I like b3, b3 and then king b2. we want to get this bishop involved in the attack somehow, which king seems b1. slightly so difficult. You play there, okay. So how, how can we activate the white bishop here? I think well, this is Black's going to play a5 now. Yeah, a5, otherwise... Because I we want to play c5. c5 and bishop a6, and then that would get the bishop in the game. Um, but so, I think he so, wants to play c5 yeah, anyway. Yeah, a5, c5 anyways is what I was about if to mention. If takes, he wants to maybe go like something like bishop... Yeah, I like bishop b5. b5. And then uh, the, there's pressure to the, the rook knight. Rook a6, rook a5. Very difficult. Yeah. Get the a pawn back and then start pushing a4, something like that, you know? So c5, of course, the only way black could really take I th is, is pawn takes. I Otherwise, now uh, I don't know about this one because be now c5 is rook d8 black will play. No yeah. Longer, no longer we have c5. I'm not, I'm not so sure about this. 
maybe it was worth considering c5 right here. c5 takes something like... Yeah, there's, there's more than one way to get the bishop into the game, though, I think. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe white is going to play something like rook d5 and, and bishop d3 uh, and activate the bishop in this manner. Yeah. Uh, also, there, there's some ideas of expanding on, on the king side, maybe, with g3 and, and f4, and then some, some ideas of breaking up the pawn structure in that way. Yeah. Okay, while we have a little pause in this game, let's take a look at uh, Fabiano's game against Firuja. Yeah, I think this is another Whew. key game for... Another uh, wow, wild yeah. game here. What's going on here? So this is... Uh, uh, this looks like... Uh, a, so it was um, a, a Roy, uh, right? Roy Lopez with the capture, capture on c6. Yes. So okay, so some maneuvering going on here. Clearly, yeah, okay. The, the f5 Typic square typical, uh, yeah, is always typical. very important. Knight comes to e6. It's very tricky this positions. Knight e6 comes in. Yeah, this is f4. the type of stuff that, that Fabi kind of excels at. Yeah. Knight e4. I mean, well, by looking at the board, Black should be happy where he is, right? I mean, he's got yeah. everything. Consolidated, everything is developed, knight is on d4. His pieces have squares. I will say Queen the bishop seven. on a6 doesn't leave the best impression yeah. to my eyes, but uh, I think that's Rook D2. really the only problem here for black. Rook e8, g4, and wow. he plays knight c2, Firuja. Firuja, all right. Of course, Fabiano could have played Rook d d1 to prevent all the sacrifices. Yeah, just, just I don't defending, know. But he probably didn't want to play passively, so he went here, and Firuja goes for it. He wanted to go g5. Right, of course. Uh, can't do nothing as black Rook because d3. White has some solid and Now points. the whole position is collapses. Is yeah, uh, all the white pawns Ooh. we see getting taken off the board, but white does have this extra... Don't know, Caleb. extra I don't know. I feel like the bishops are so strong in yeah. this position. Uh, that being oh. said, though, this this black king isn't totally comfortable on f7. We see we see g takes f6 probably coming next. Yes, and then uh, rook maybe f2. a rook f2. And how does black navigate the, the complications around this king? Can I will say it? white's extra knights not not looking very good. No, a4 <laughs> is dropping too. No, I think black is just winning here. But okay, he can just run. I think. Just run. But again, Fabiano, you know, it's, it's always difficult. Tricky, always difficult, <laughs> tricky yeah. guy. Uh, so I, see. That being said, very impressive sacrifice from from. Yeah, absolutely. Here. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like he might have underestimated this because maybe something could have been done to prevent this. You know. Yeah. Uh, not leaving this rook on f1, for example. Uh, yeah, or just move the rook on f2 or something. Yeah. That at least when it, it the sacrifice occurs, it doesn't just comes in with the old temples. You know. Right. No, I mean, remember we talk about that bishop not. <laughs> being very active, but suddenly so this bishop is... Yeah, Ferruja solves this problem uh, with, with a clever sacrifice. Yeah, this, this and now this is this difficult. is tough. Rook e2 comes ah, in. Okay. So we can take on f6. Yeah, rook f6. But it's, it's yeah. not, not I'm not quite sure if this was necessary because for. a4 was hanging too. Yeah. He actually could have just taken on a4 and just run with the king on c8. Well, I think uh, his idea is, is a bishop b7 move uh, Ooh, in the near future. B7. What to do now against bishop b7? Uh... Is it time to play something like? Uh, maybe I can just play rook e1. Rook e1 here. Yeah, I guess there's there's some rook b1 ideas that I have to look out for, but uh, it's not totally clear to me how how Fabi is going to navigate uh, all the pressure around his king, as well as these these open bishops and rooks. Yeah, yeah, but it looks very very. It, Very difficult. At yeah. this point, I, I think it's about finding practical chances. Absolutely, it's, it's yeah. not about trying to. You cannot to allow bishop b seven because bishop b seven, the g two pawn is g two is hanging and. Uh, so yeah, so rook e one is an idea. Knight c to e one might be an idea. Knight c to e one is a possibility. Yes. But uh, regardless, this bishop comes to b seven, and, and the rooks are are going to be raking through uh, the white position here. Absolutely. Uh, so perhaps this is the this is a tough one. chance to, this to is try chance. and score this is a full chance. Point. Let's take a look at the other games to see if. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, Eric Hansen against Wesley So here. So before, just played by Wesley here, and uh, he's trying to weaken the d4 square. And now take on d6, e5. So let's see. So yeah, uh, captures on e5. I think though this this looks pretty comfortable for Black. Uh, I don't see any major issues here. Uh, all of Black's pieces seem reasonably happy. And now with the open... So Wesley is considering to take, taking on c3, of course. Yeah. 
and also he's uh, trying to see which way he should take on e5, take with a knight or take with a pawn perhaps. Yeah, I think pawn takes might actually but be slightly more natural. Yeah, just it, keeping it, an it, eye on yeah, the it doesn't look, and d4. It doesn't look like there are any problems here. Uh, so, Wesley, uh, thinking about various good options, but I don't think Eric is, is really putting on too much pressure here. No. And as, also, as big time said. advantage for Wesley, as you can see, it's uh, yeah, two, that's, two and a half minute time advantage. Something so. our players have kind of excelled at. That's uh, good. That, that's very important. And then we have the game of. Uh, do we look at the Le Quang? Not I yet, right? I think we have not seen Le Quang Liam's game. So, this uh, is a Le Quang uh, Liam, black against. Sarich. Ooh, so we do see a very strong knight on, on f5, f5 here. And this another knight is coming to d5. N the plan of Sarich is to play knight e2, knight c3, and put a knight on d5. Yeah, this is not the most comfortable ah, position I've yeah, ever this seen. Is, this, they, are putting up, they, are, they are putting a lot of pressure on us in this match. Yeah. I, I can see that we are just somehow not as comfortable. Yeah, the, the uh, pressure is, has risen, and the chess yeah. are kind of rising to the challenge. They, they are. Uh, they that are being said, uh, Liam well. is now playing knight c6 and, and hoping to bring his own knights to, to some good outposts on d4 as well as b4. Yeah, knight c6, knight d5. Yeah, I think simply queen d8, and then uh, I'm hoping to just Sur leave, survive, leave the knights yeah. sitting. Hopefully we can survive there. Yeah. If rook b2... Uh, rook b2, maybe knight b4 is... Uh, Mm -hmm. is Liam's idea. Just blocking off this B file using this knight mm -hmm. uh, on the south. Yeah, because allowing the rook to come in it will make it very difficult Definitely. Uh, to do anything. So. Uh, the knight's on their own, perhaps black yeah. can deal with, but if a rook gets into the seventh rank uh, or, or uh, anywhere in black's position, yeah. it's going to be Clock difficult. Black situation, to, to deal Le Quang is, yeah, clearly you can, we can see it's a little bit uncomfortable. He's a minute minute down on the clock. Yeah, he's spending some time. Uh, he's not in horrible time pressure just yet, but yeah. uh, it he definitely has to be accurate. Potential, Absolutely. Potential he to, has to, to be very, back. very accurate here. Uh, because the knight on f5 is very strong, the knight on d5, so he has to make sure he doesn't blunder anything. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because uh, it's, a, it's a very dangerous position. So, should we go back to the Grishuk game against Lenier to see? Okay, we have some exchanges here, and. Uh, yeah, so, so we, we did we, see this rook come to d5. Yeah, we left it off here after king b1, a5, b3 was played. Right. And say I wonder if he could have saved a little time with playing b3, king, b2, because we do want to have the king on b2 in this position. I don't think so, b5 was really a, an immediate threat for no, black, so no, king b1 looked a little bit strange. Yeah, because I think it was a little bit of time wasted mm -hmm. there. So bishop okay. e4. So uh, white did c5. activate the bishop in this manner, bringing it through d3 to e4. Yeah, and it, it seems like, you know, probably the bishop is not as active as the knight, and knight has the potential to go knight e6, knight e4, so Lenier wouldn't mind if... Uh, Black yeah, takes the bishop I, I definitely uh, agree. So H4 played here. So I would expect yeah, rook, rook d6. Rook and d7. We do see okay a forcing the trade of the pair of the rooks. And now Grishuk is trying to press. Uh, I I think definitely this this uh, is not the advantage Alinea was hoping for. Although this c pawn now might might be a relevant factor. Yeah, no, absolutely creating some counterplay here. We we cannot afford the rook to land on d2. So I think the exchange of the rooks is pretty forced. Still, I think it's just probably equal. Just exchange the rooks, king c3. The clock situation, we're about a minute ahead on a clock. That's good. Uh, uh, yeah, and I'm just trying to calculate if, if there's any immediate pawn breaks for black after this rook trade. Rook and trade, king c3. Probably, not, I think he wants to go knight h5. Oh, no, knight, knight h5, h5 is knight the way for him to put pressure. Okay. Yeah, I think that's what he wants to do. But then we can uh, we can put a king on d2, and if knight f4 played, just play g3, capture, capture. Knight goes back to h5. G4. So we see the black king coming to the queen side to yeah. deal with the c pawn, and perhaps then the white king will come to the king side to deal with the, the black yeah. minor piece. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's the balance that, that will be kept. Uh, and it's probably why this position lo looks to be drawn. Yeah, it's uh, close to be drawn. Let's see if Fabiano's game. Four pawns, Caleb. Four pawns. Really, yeah, this sacrifice proved to be really... And in fact, really strong, and uh, I, I think, think Fabi just underestimated it, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's the C, the C4 pawn that is going to make the difference here. Yeah. Uh, it's got a pretty clear path through the C1 square, and unless Fabi can find some way to, to immediately stop it, it's it's going to be game over. Yeah. Once the pawn rolls on C3, C2, I think it's just, I agree, it's just going to be over. So we're, we're under pressure. Yeah, under Clearly. quite a bit of pressure. A lot of uh, pressure we are here. Let's so see if Wesley So can do something. I think I actually expect Faruja to, to convert that. Uh, so let's let's see on this other on these other can boards. Wesley do some magic here. Let's see. Ooh, well, this, this is looking slightly nice. better for, for Black. Nice. In the last How week, is Eric going to defend? How did this happen? 
How did this happen? So West, Wesley did actually opt Okay, Wesley played for H5. H5. Interesting, we didn't look at that one. A nice okay. in-between move. Yep. And after the trade, he takes on C3. Now this B file is opened up and... E6 played. Does that, does that move actually make sense here? What, E6? It's strange, no? I, I don't I don't trust this move. Bishop D4. It, it's activating Black's Rook, kind of for free. Yeah, but... And, and Wesley uses H4, this time very nice H4 to cover the Rook G3 ideas. Mm -hmm. And now after knight f4, checkmate is threatened since Rook c7. Yeah, Eric has, has simply ignored the threat. Knight g2. Ah, knight g2 is queen f7. Does it matter? King h7? And then and I think he wants to take on g7. Uh, with the queen? Yeah. Uh, okay. Takes rook g7, takes everything. Rook b3, wow. Well, what a move. Okay, so wow. queen g4, Eric was actually ready for this one, but now maybe queen h6. Just take, no? Take, take, rook g4. Just, okay. Just winning, I think. Yeah, oh, fair enough. F3, I have rook f3. Rook f3. Very important. Yeah, yeah I you're, think, you're winning some I pawns think Wesley is going to make a huge one point. I think he's going to probably win this one. Mm. Eric's got no time as well. He's got 48 seconds and under tremendous pressure here. So. Uh, there's actually there's a tactic here that I cheated a little bit. Knight takes h3. Is, is devastating. Knight takes h3. And then if you take back, take uh, back. I'll move my queen to ah. h6, and you're, you're simply ah, pins. very uh, nice. And wow, Wesley actually does find it. A very course, impressive tactic. Of course he finds it, yeah. <laughs> I'll just or queen f4. Oh, no, probably. Queen f4, queen, queen h5. h5. No, you want to take back. No, you want to take back with the queen. Of course. Very nice. Beautiful. Beautiful finish. Yeah, f3, there's actually rook takes yeah. f3 again. Wesley is, saw. Yeah. He's Getting it done for us. Absolutely. So, this is Fabi huge. Is, is under quite a bit of pressure. Uh, but I think even Wesley if Fabi loses, we, gonna, we got the one point coming from here, so that's yes. good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, yes, and, and Wesley wins it. Resigns. Wesley wins it, and that puts us seven points. We're at seven points right now, one and a half points away from winning this match. Wait, what just happened here? So, definite changes. Uh, Huge changes here, and I like it. Two of Black's knights have disappeared uh, in exchange Huge for Huge changes. Okay, rock. so the knight came to d5. And so we do see this knight come to, knight to b4, b4 like we expected. And, at, well, white goes in for rook takes b4. But not queen a8. Queen a8's a nice move. It's, it's always nice, nice to trade the queens off the board in this game because there are more pieces on the board, more attacking chances here. Yeah. So bishop b6. And okay, so in this position, white has two knights you for the rook. You must keep your b pawn. Bishop yeah. c3, bishop c5. But in this case, the, the two knights now on, on d5 and f5 are, are not actually contributing as protected. much as they could have been. Knight d3. Okay, the question is if... Okay, but this... This doesn't look so bad anymore. Well, first of all, there, this is rook a2. Uh, rook a2, bishop b1 he wants to play. Right. I feel like black has... You know, Black has chances now, but maybe it's not so simple, you know? What if I, I simply like play... Maybe uh, Bishop B3? Okay, King F7 he plays first. Yeah, I, I want to play something like Rook B6 uh, in the near future. If we can get that, you know, eliminate the C pawn. Yeah, I want to get rid of the C pawn. I also want to take on B5 okay, and play okay. Bishop D4. But what's going on now if we play take, take, and Rook A2? Okay. And now, now there should be one. There's G2 is hanging, of course, is yeah. the idea. Yeah, 14 seconds for Le Quang. Yeah, minute 40 for Ivan. This is, I think, going to be the, the key game. Uh, Lenier yeah. has officially drawn Grishuk, by the way, uh, on Lenier. that, in okay, that let's take end look. game that we expected. Uh, sorry, Lenier, Dominguez. Le Dominguez, okay. Yeah. Dominguez draw on that end game. Okay. Uh, so, so we're at seven and a half right that's now. the result we expected. Yeah, it brings us to Fabi, seven what's going on? Fabi? One point to score uh, to, to clinch the match. Fabi still... Fabi, trying. Yeah, trying is a good word. Yeah, <laughs> um, trying. But this is the big game, so let's see here. Yeah, this is the one that matters for us so. here. With a draw here, we officially have, have equalized. Uh, well, not equalized. We'll we force have forced tie. at least a, a tie in the so match. So we are at 7.5 right now. The score is 7.5. We have, the chess bros have... 2.5. Uh, 2.5. Two yeah. Uh, and, and so with the draw here, of course, we move to 8 points. The key number to win the match is 8.5. Eight and, eight and, and we can very much expect to score a half point out of four games in the final wow. round. So he played king d1. Just giving up this g-pawn, but getting the king in front oh, of this the is, This is like anything now. can yeah, happen now. Yeah, h3 is hanging, and is black better all of a sudden? Yeah, black is just winning now. H-pawn is just going to quit now. Well, I guess it all depends on the c-pawn, right? Uh, whether or not... Uh, but I feel like even with that c-pawn, I mean, I'm yeah, just going to sacrifice my bishop. Maybe bishop b5, and I can hope to, to actually prevent you from sacrificing this bishop. Bishop g4? Bishop g4, okay. Yeah, it's, it's not so easy. 
it was bishop uh, so g4. No. Yeah, bishop g4. Uh oh, I don't like that move. Ah, uh, yeah, no, it's bishop c4 ideas. Trying All right, to, uh, trying to trick. Okay. So king g6 has been played to step out of bishop c4. Now he actually wants to go rook c2. He wants to play rook c2 now if you play, okay, king b1. Wow, okay. So now the h pawn does, does come off the board as we expected. So bishop c4, we'll play bishop g4, as you were saying. And now h3, h2, h1, and, and the game should end. I think we're just going to win now. I think we're just going to clinch now. I like it. Knight c6 might be an annoying move, actually, with the idea of knight e7 to f5. Uh -huh. But then I think we just mate. Yeah, h2, h1. Oh, h1 yeah. is mate. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, no, this was, yeah. Th there's no way to stop this pawn, I guess. Yeah. And now Ivan has actually used his, his uh, entire time edge. Yeah, it's, I think it's just over now, Caleb. Yeah. Takes, wow. White takes. queens. This this was not the way to to play to play on. I think this is King this five. is dead. Uh, knight at five, but you're not in time to stop at yep. h one, and the game the game is over. And queen d one. Or yeah, queen h two even as well. Uh, the bishop on c two falls. Two minor pieces versus two major pieces. Fantastic. It's not the imbalance Fantastic. that you want. Uh, and yeah, Ivan will be resigning shortly. And wow. Fabi's game is still in Fabi progress. Game though. Still, but we already win. We already won the match. We've won the match, and Fabi has just resigned. Fabi resigned, but uh, but we have scored. We won this match two and a half. Uh, so yeah, now it's eight and a half to three and a half. Eight and a half, three and a half. We officially won the match. I think Archbishops mm -hmm. at eight and a half. Uh, eight, eight and a half already. Yeah. So eight and a half is of course oh. the 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 score you need to win the match. There are sixteen games total, so we now have won a majority of the total games. Mm -hmm. There's actually four games left to play in round four, and we'll see if we can run up the score a little bit Absolutely. against these chess bros. Absolutely. Um, fantastic, fantastic efforts here, Lequang. Yeah, that was a toss-up. <laughs> yeah, and, that was, you know, that was he, crazy he, game. he was actually in trouble, I think. Mm -hmm. But uh, Saric just misplayed it. That seems to be the story of, of the match for for Ivan Saric. They He's had gotten some good positions, yeah. but then uh, our yeah. players are just and Saric has lost wins. all the games. Yeah, I think so. I think that's been that's close. been a big problem. Yeah, he's been had good positions, but hasn't scored. And I think Eric now lost. Uh, Eric drew against Fabi in round one, but two. I think he's lost. So lost yeah, the, the next bottom two. boards are having difficulty. Firuja came back and won, so we have one loss. Fabi lost, unfortunately. But yeah. of course, Firuja playing very excellent chess in the Pro Chess League so far. Yeah. Uh, we do have the results for round three. Uh, Lenny Dominguez draws Alexander Grishuk. Fabi actually goes down to Ali Reza Firuja. Uh, Ivan Saric falls to Liam Lee, and Eric Hansen is defeated by Wesley So. Bringing our total score to eight and a half points. The magic number has been reached. We have won the match with one round left to go. Fantastic. And we'll see uh, how Fantastic. many points we can score. And we have two guys who scored two and a half, I believe, Lanier and Wesley. Uh, yeah, they're actually getting quite quite a bit done maybe, for us. Maybe Lacroix? Uh, I think Liam Lee, uh, yeah. I'm not totally sure on each player's yes, individual three, scores, yeah, yeah. but we, we've scored quite quite a bit. I, I so think Fabi has the, actually been the, the only one lagging behind We are at bit. plus five, let's put it this way. So plus for everybody, five plus good. five we have right now. Six wins, one loss. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, well, I think we're actually due for a break. Why don't we come back with round four in just a few minutes. Thanks for watching. We want to watch the Cardinals or the Blues. What about after the game? Heading back to the hotel would be a major error. Mm -mm. Instead, boogie through the city and discover the music that gave the blues their name at the National Blues Museum, Broadway Oyster Bar, or even the legendary Blueberry Hill. So whether you love the Cardinals, the blues, or the blues, come play with us. And you guys know I can't play this, right? St. Lou is always exploring.
Hello, and welcome back to round four of the Pro Chess League Week 5. Of course, this is the St. Louis Archbishops uh, facing the Canada Chess Bras. And we have officially clinched the match. Uh, my name is Caleb Denby. I'm here with Grandmaster Varakobian. And we're, Hi, Caleb. Hi, we're taking, yeah. taking a victory lap now, <laughs> yeah. I guess. The match is already decided. Mm -hmm. uh, we already have eight and a half points. So that, but now it's still important to get as many points as possible. Definitely. To separate our, ourselves from the Chess Bras yeah. to make sure we... Uh, we finish first of course, in our division. Every point you score in the match goes towards your total score in the division, and so we'll be looking to score some more points here in the final round in order to give us a little bit of an extra buffer against all these other teams. Absolutely. It's um, been very, very well, well played match so far. We were under some pressure in the last match, you know, but things went our, went our way. We won the difficult position on the Kwang head against uh, uh, Saurich. We turned that difficult potential loss to a win, and that was... That was the, the real changer, key. Yeah. Uh, so now uh, the, the chess bras uh, still just fighting to, to score some points in the final round while we're, we're looking to extend the lead. Uh, why don't we take a look and see what our final round pairings are actually going to look like. Uh, of course, for the chess bras, we have Alexander Grishuk on board one against Fabi Caruana, our board one. Ali Reza Ferruja uh, faces Lenier Dominguez on board two. Board three is Wesley So against Ivan Serich. And on board four, we have Liam Lee against Eric Hansen. And uh, I was talking earlier, this is really the round where the Archbishops have, have shown, because it's Absolutely. it's the most fair matchup. It's board one against board, board one, two. board two against board two, and that's where the rating discrepancy is, is really shown. Absolutely. Very, very you know, heavy favorites on the other two boards. And uh, they've both been playing well. Vesley is just two and a half, uh, two and a half out of three. I know the Kwang won the last game. I don't know if... You, if you, do you remember what he did in the first game? Uh, I, I can he, find out. I know he drew his second game and won the last one. But the first one, uh, if he had won that one, he'd won or drawn that one. Uh, you know, with a win, he has two and a half. If he so, yeah, he actually drew in drew. rounds one okay, and two. So he has and, two uh, out of three. Two out of three. Not, not a bad score. Uh, I think yeah. the, the story of, of the match has actually been... Grishuk and Ferruja are, are kind of getting the job done on the first two boards. They're holding they're, the board one and two. They're keeping but pace, but three boards and three and four are where the, the archbishop. We're racking up a lot of a lot of wins on the three and four, and that's you know, that's that's the key. That's yeah, everything absolutely. in this match. Absolutely. So, so we're about to see the last uh, round, and uh, again we already have eight and a half. So we that put us at. Uh, 91 and a half, right? Uh, so we'll get 10 match points win. for uh, winning the match, and then we also already have eight and a half points in the match. So if the match ended right now, no. our score would go to 100, 100. Uh, even. And so they would go to whatever let's see, they, they have. have uh, they have three and a half points, I believe, so they would go to 88 and a half, and so we would have kind of a, an 11 and a half point lead uh, going into these final two rounds. But, of course, uh, the, the bigger the lead, the better. Absolutely. And uh, it'll take a lot of pressure off of Absolutely. us if we have a, a substantial lead uh, after this week. Absolutely. Uh, once again, we have already played the Marshalls and the Unicorns and the Chicago Wind. Wind. So uh, our final two rounds are against the Krakens and the Capybaras, uh, two teams which have not had the most success so far. So Chicago Wind will qualify if it ended right now, they would qualify? Or? I believe so. I believe uh, the, the 13th team uh, is one of those three fifth place teams in each division there, and it's done by performance rating. So the wind have a substantially So we would uh, have a buy, and who else would have a buy? So right now, uh, it'd be first place in each division gets gets a first round buy. buy. Uh -huh. So the, the chess... Then, oh, so then it leaves nine teams, and then the, the, the Chicago, okay. Yes, yeah, so, so that makes the, the 10 teams, that's, that's how teams. It's, that's even. Um, so, uh, the round has actually just, just gotten started. underway, so why don't we take a look at these games. Shook, uh, white against Fabiano, and he started with knight f3. All right. Uh, so now maybe the chess bras, we might see them switch to a slightly more conservative approach, uh, just doing some damage control, yeah. making sure they get enough points in, in this match. Yeah, so knight d7, yeah, the match is decided, but, you know, so, so this, this knight d7 is an interesting move played by Fabi. He's actually, uh, we, we've seen him do this earlier in the Pro Chess League. Yeah. Uh, it, it's kind of a strange looking move order, but it transposes yeah. to some very common lines. Yeah. Okay, so C6, and um, okay, he wants to castle, and uh, probably H6 would be a useful move to play in this position, but the Queen only 7. 
Uh, yeah, of course, in, in this position, the, the dark squared bishop for white sometimes has some trouble finding, finding the perfect square. Mm -hmm. So bishop g5 is quite common, uh, and trading off on f6 is also not, not super uncommon as well. Uh, so yeah, we see black with a slight central uh, majority here, and white will be looking to, to pressure it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, knight, yeah, d5 is just a little bit vulnerable, so maybe knight c3, but also always have to watch out for d4, so. Um. Uh, yeah, uh, I've always heard when uh, white fianchettos this bishop to g2, that's often the key piece in the position. E4. Uh, wow, so, so white usually looks to open up this bishop as much as possible, but e4 is perhaps giving black the opportunity to, to keep this bishop. A bit unexpected, but you know, yeah. what he's trying to do, he's trying to secure a c4 square for his knight. Ah, I see. So he wants to lay, get play knight bd2, and then at some point maybe capture on d5 and put a knight on c4, right. something in that kind of nature. Um, do you ever see uh, black take on e4 there? That, that's the move that kind of came to my mind. Um, well, the problem is we have this d6 bishop right. vulnerable, so that will open up the position, and then we have a vulnerable bishop on d6. Yeah, uh, so I guess black's just not quite ready for the opening of no, the d5. not yet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Rook e1. Okay. Yeah, with the plan is just to, to, for why the plan is to play knight d2, knight c4, and try to put pressure. I mean, white is a good bishop. The bishop on g2 is a very good bishop here. Definitely. Um, um, it's an open game now, and I mean, this 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 both pawns are weak. I mean, d3, d5, they all. See, to my eyes, it seems like if if black can find a, a good square for this bishop on c8, then then he'll be doing quite all right. Rook e8, uh, yeah. Until then, it, it's going to be a little. He bit almost wish the bishop was on g4 here. Yeah, it's, you it's don't have to worry about it. Yet. Slightly awkward for black to get uh, yes. uh, the rest of his pieces developed. H6. He, he chose to play H6 first. So yeah, I uh, guess he was Thomas perhaps worried. Rook e8, some knight g5 jumps, you know. Yeah, some some, some danger. Like that. So. Uh, especially that knight on g5 would be rerouting to the e4 but square. But now the shoe goes for it. Okay. He just wants to get rid of the backward pawn and... Uh, yeah, the pawn's gone and perhaps now white's a little bit more ready to deal with the opening exactly. of the position. He's got a good bishop on g2 and the rook is on open file, some knight b5 potential. I think this is... It's, it's not worse. comfortable. Not comfortable. No, this is worse. I think probably did not equalize here, I think. Uh, maybe bishop b4 is, is Fabi's idea, just to get this bishop out of the way of, of this and d file. Queen b3? Uh, queen b3, queen a5, or queen b6, I wanted, mm -hmm. to, wanted to play. Queen b6 hitting, hits the knight on d4, so maybe that one's a bit better. Yeah, bishop b3, ah. knight c5, yeah. but it looks a little loose, yeah? It right. doesn't feel like black's pieces are solid here. So I think this is where Fabi should spend some time. Yeah, uh, because knight c by, by the way, knight e6 is a serious threat here. Yeah, you got to come up with, with a concrete plan yeah. uh, to, to finish development. I think it was just be too slow. Perhaps I did not quite understand uh, why not just play d4 here. Yeah, d4 keeps the position yeah, closed, keeps that white bishop space. Uh, out of the game. Okay, knight bd2, I go castle, knight c4, bishop c7. Yeah, it, it seems pretty reasonable to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this this opening up of the position perhaps it's it's not uh, not what's best for Fabi here. No. So he said he plays knight c five. Okay. Uh, and this move seems seems pretty good actually. He wants to go bishop g four. Yeah, bishop g four. Also knight e six mm -hmm. is uh, a good idea for for black just to in fact start yeah, trading like some pieces. If you play like uh, b four, I'm not sure if it's a good move, but he can play bishop g four. Right. Let's say f three. It seems like wait f three everything is hanging g four c five. Then you go knight. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's working. Maybe even 96, I don't know, and then b4 is hanging. But okay, b4 also 96 could be played. Right. I don't know if Krishuk. There is, there is knight db5 here attacking the bishop. That looks kind of annoying, I don't know. Slightly dangerous. If um, bishop b7, he can trade and uh, take back with the bishop on d8. Is there a move, uh, slightly awkward, like knight b5, maybe there's rook e8 that. Uh, Black could consider, and then just rook e8, knight e8, and, and trying Eight, to... Knight uh, e8, bishop f4. Yeah, we're just, just so... It's, we're just uncomfortable. It's we're difficult. just behind, yeah, behind. Maybe bishop b8, I don't know. Um, bishop b8. So notably, it, it looks like Wesley So and Ivan Saric have actually already agreed to a draw in this, this round four here. Um, wow. Which, that's probably something that, that both teams aren't too unhappy about. Uh, okay, the match, is, just, the match is decided, here. they just want to get their teams a half point and, and call okay. it a day. So Wesley was up a pawn and I guess offered a draw and... Uh, okay, well that puts us at nine points, right? Yeah. Uh, 
like we said, the, the match has already been decided, yeah. so this is a comfortable way for, for both players to make sure that they're helping out their team a little bit. Sure, get but that on the other hand, I mean, I don't think Vesta would lose this position. He's up, yeah. up a pawn. Maybe he could have played for a bit yeah. more. But, uh, He's up a pawn, so I don't think he would lose this. Yeah. All right, so let's switch now to the game of... Uh, we looked at uh, Fabiano's yeah, game. Yeah, we let's looked look at, at Fabi. Uh, Firuja, maybe? Yeah, Firuja, of course, uh, a very strong player. With white, uh, uh, he, with white, he's on offense. Yes. So let's see what he played. Looks like he played something uncompromising. Okay. So he played... Perhaps he's looking to score the full point. Yeah. D4. Queen D2. B3. Wow, so this queen comes to D2, uh, allowing white to castle queen side a bit more quickly. G3. A little bit loose now. F4 is under attack. Yeah, knight e2 covers it. Queen h4 renews the threat. Knight d5, you'd see. Now wants to eliminate the knight, and f4 is hanging. Mm -hmm. This looks very comfortable for Lenny Dominguez, I, I have to say. Um, all of his pieces make sense. His yeah, knight's absolutely. coming to f5, and this bishop on g2 is, is not a great piece. No, bishop on g2 is uh, blockaded. I mean, clock situation is the only thing that worries me a little bit. I mean, I think his position is absolutely fine. Um, yeah, in fact, you can just play knight e f5 here. Right. Or rook e8 is fine, knight e4, yeah, then knight e5. Yeah. He's absolutely fine. The only thing is the clock, you know? Uh, there is no delay or there is no oh. increment, right? Here. Uh, there's a two second increment. Two, sec two, two second, second increment. increment. Okay. Uh, and so, yeah, after knight e f5, of course, this knight covers the d6 weakness. It also blockades the pawn on f4, and the white structure is just a little bit fractured here. And so, Firuja is, is trying to prepare f5. Perhaps if. yeah. So what what can Black do here? I think if if Black wants to well, Queen F six. Yeah, Queen okay. F six, and then and then just bring a knight to F five, and your yeah. position is, is so solid that, that nothing fine. can. I mean, can Queen F six is well placed. You have some A five A four ideas. Right. Rook C eight comes in. Uh, so yeah, I think everything to play here for to to play for here for uh, Lenny Dominguez. I think he's he's got the edge in this position. Absolutely. So. Um, Let's look at the... Uh, yeah, Liam Lee's game is, is the final game we had to we take a look at. Yeah, yeah Wesley saw so Drew already, so he's white against Eric Hansen. Mm -hmm. So this was a Sicilian, I believe. Some Sicilian here. Like a Sicilian defense. And yeah. uh, Queen G3, now some Bishop H6 ideas. Bishop G5 as well. H4, trying to yeah, get so some space. Liam going for uh, kind of a kingside attack. Uh, making Queen some, H4, some definite preparing hits. bishop h6. Bishop, bishop h6, seven. as well as uh, maybe like g4 ideas to, to come as well. Okay, so there was a repetition actually. Mm. Uh, Kwang didn't want to repeat. Interesting. He's just trying to get the maximum. He's behind on the clock, so perhaps maybe repeating wasn't. Because it looked like at least Eric wanted to repeat because. See, he, might, he repeated. Uh, yeah, it might actually not be too late to repeat after b5 here. Uh, maybe there's there's still Queen H4 ideas, but yeah. instead we see A3. Uh, A3 Liam played, pl okay. playing for the win. Playing for a win. All right. So okay, position is I think it's uh, it's probably about equal here. Um, okay, so Bishop F8. Bishop F8. Yeah. If we play C5, then Bishop E6. Yeah, probably. Rook A C1. Yeah. I like Rook C1. He wants uh, to capture on B5 twice now. Makes and There's also threats of Knight D5. Claiming the, claiming the Queen is misplaced, so Queen B8. Stepping out of uh, the line of sight of the Rook. And, and taking on C4 was Knight A4 and Knight B6. So oh, of course. So, yeah. uh, so how do you deal with this tension between the B5 and C4 pawn here? You just let it sit? He no, he, he actually captures. Okay, captures. Okay. Knight a2. knight a2. And this is very knight logical. A two, knight a2 trying trying to play knight b4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, putting pressure on this backward c6 pawn, and it looks like white has just enough coverage over c5 to, to make sure this stays as a weakness. I, yeah, well, that's, it's very important that you cannot play c5, because c5 is in now. Knight b4 is yeah. coming up to put pressure. Also, if, and, uh, if something ever does happen to the c pawn, if it does come to c5 or it gets captured, then the d5 square. Is something that looks very nice for for white. Oh, this is nice actually. Knight before yeah. comes in, the knight pawn before can, you know, route to d3, then go to c5. So this is very nice. Yeah, a comfortable edge for for Liam Lee here. Absolutely. So we have one result. Wesley saw Drew against Sadich. So we are, have it at nine points at the moment.
Yeah. So and let's take a look at the uh, yeah, Grishuk like game. Yeah, we can. Things have, have only gotten more awkward for Fabian's yeah, pieces. Yeah, well, clearly, <laughs> if we can see that clearly our uh, indication is, was correct because knight b5 was played, bishop yeah. b8. Interesting. Another tempi. Yeah, uh, the, the black piece is just being pushed back. More tempis. Knight now knight f5 hits the queen, <laughs> and bishop h6 is, oh. is on the board. This is ay, ay, devastating ay. stuff. Devastating. I, I think Fabi might, might just be losing here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tough day for Fabi, looks like. Yeah, yeah a, a very he, tough day. He indeed. got that one win against Saric, but mm -hmm. it didn't look very clear. And now Bishop H6 and E5 is hanging. Taking on C3, not going to help. Queen C3, and now diagonal pressure we have. Yeah, Maybe Knight G4 for black? Oh, here? I'm not totally certain, yeah. It's just, I mean, we have no development. Rook on a8, rook it's, on a8. Uh, I mean, it's it's ugly. It's very, very ugly. We see knight c. Oh, knight c5 and f5 is attacked, but I guess uh, knight. Oh, knight g7. Wow. So how do the tactics work out here? Knight well, b3. I guess there's knight well, e8. I think we're just going to be rook e8, and, and white is up. Black two is pawns. just down yeah. two pounds because the queen is under attack. Right. Uh, I, I don't see what else to, to do though for, for black. So yeah, yeah. Knight b3 too. is played. Now knight e8, rook e8. Uh, simply a takes b3, I expect. And uh, it's two pawns to the good for uh, Alexander Grishuk. Yeah. Well, okay. Probably just. Yeah, we have to go for some tricks, probably. Yeah, rook d2, bishop c3 trick, you know. <laughs> right. Take rook e1, okay. Yeah, simply rook c1. Not going to for that. b7 is under attack, bishop d4. Trying to get some activity, but it's, B7, it's simply not enough. Yeah, this bishop b7 could, could be played, I think. Uh, yeah, I think this is Gr Grishik's just winning. Bishop takes b7 does come on the board. Uh, a6 might even come to fall as well. And there's, there's no way to really add pressure to this f2 pawn, uh, despite this bishop being on d4. I think bishop a6 here. It's, it's just uh, all, all of the pawns are falling. And the black king is actually even weaker than the white king due to these extra pawns. Yeah. And now the problem is every trade, every trade is going to uh, help uh, bishop c1, just, just securing everything. Yeah, guarding, guarding b2. Because if we take on c3, take, take, just bishop b2. Yeah, this is, this is dead lost. I think it's, it's pounds, safe to say yeah. uh, Grishik's going to convert this Most one. likely, yeah, he will convert this. Let's move on to the other game. Let's see how... Yeah. Uh, I, I still very much like Lenier's position here. Um, he sacrificed the pawn. I don't know. Yeah, so we saw. So, oh, so this queen comes out to so b4 and takes on b7. Kind of a. Okay, so he could have played b6. Yeah. He didn't have to sacrifice, but he thought, okay, I can sacrifice. Uh, I think uh, I agree with him. Uh, in fact, I think a3. Right. So yeah, now something. Securing the d4 square. Very important. Securing the d4 square, and now. Uh, now it's white to move in this position, and uh, I'm not sure. We're still two minutes behind. Lanier is two minutes behind on right. the clock. Mm -hmm. I think Lanier it has been the kind of the slow mover of, of the archbishops. Okay, uh, queen the before. Season, okay, can can take on b3. Take on b3. Rook a2, perhaps. Yeah, this mm, is starting to look. Starting to look very a interesting, dangerous. No? Yeah. Very interesting. So a takes b3, of course, c takes b3 is forced. Yeah, a takes Otherwise b3 is just made in one. The so c takes b3, rook a2, mm -hmm. captures rook a check, king b1. King b1, then queen rook. a1 check. Oh, queen a1. I thought even rook a1 with the idea of rook a2 to follow. Yeah, and that's going to be good. I mean, knight e3 check there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's got to go for it. Right. right. Uh, He's got to go for it, I think. Is there any... Okay. Maybe it's not completely clear, but... He's got he's to gotta do that, I think. Uh, well, well, I think the other thing Lenier could do here is just kind of sit on the position. I don't know if he's in a, a huge rush to, to break through immediately. Uh, moves like 93 also seem to be pretty possible immediately. The only thing I'm worried about, like, queen d4, just... I want like okay. I, I want yeah. That's, I wanna, that's a concrete way to. to I want to make off. sure. Yeah, I have this diagonal, because I think if you don't take right away, there's a chance that he will take on f5 and put a knight on d4 just to shut down that idea. Right. So this might be a moment. Do it now or 
Yeah, so AB3, CB3, Rook A2, A2. is the sacrifice yeah. we're looking at. King A2, Rook A8 check, mm -hmm. King B1, and then we're looking at a uh, few things there. Queen A1 check, King C2, yeah, 93 knight check, the king, king comes to D2. D, uh, yeah, D2 actually might be. And now E3 is hanging. Right. And, uh, knight takes D1, Rook takes D1, Rook A2 check. Looks like just it doesn't quite work. King E1. Right. So doesn't look like it works. And yeah, in interesting stuff for sure. Uh, and so knight e3 immediately the problem is is queen d4. Is there anything we can we can do about that? Or, or maybe so. Okay. What what are you worried about if I just play a simple move like rook c5? What is white going to do to, to consolidate? Perhaps maybe just take on f5. Knight takes f5 and play like knight d4. So e2. So we do see a b3. So okay, I think Perugia has to take back. He recaptures, okay. and now what's the idea? Uh, the problem is there's no time. Lanier has to go for it, otherwise... Oh wow, yeah, 12 seconds to, to 5 minutes. He has to make a decision right now. He, was, he goes for it, yeah. okay. So king takes a2 is, is a must. It's a must. And rook a8 check, king b1, and either rook a1 or, or queen a1 we're, we're considering. Queen a1, king c2. Uh, rook c8 check, king d2. Yeah, so rook a1 was immediately played, and now there's knight e3, but king d2 is what we were worried about. Yeah. And maybe well, we get we got here, but we just yeah, we couldn't we couldn't find the continuation. And yeah. Lanier is spending the remainder of his time. He plays knight e3 with one second on his clock, and and I don't see it. I think white is white might actually just be winning here. Yeah, knight d1. White's up a piece. Okay, rook a2, I guess bishop c2. Knight d5. Knight d5 is, is, yeah, is something. Knight d5, maybe I just have queen, queen d4. d4. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be hard to save this one. Okay, so king e3 instead, but now queen h4. h4 trying to get at the king from the other side, but I think there's just enough pieces around the white king. In fact, maybe white can get away with playing something like uh, like queen b8 check and, and taking on, on d6 D6, here. D6, yeah. Or perhaps rook d2 might be an okay move, just okay. to consolidate. Rook d2 know. consolidating. And now taking on d6. Because then he's going to start to generate his own threats. Yes. He will uh, have and his own threats after queen d6. That's kind of the key when, when uh, a sacrifice has been played like this. You, you want to, yes, one, consolidate, but also... Start creating your own threats so you don't have to be on the defensive for, for quite so long. Uh, so yeah, here we see queen d6, and wow, uh, rook e1 is trying to create some threats. Uh, I guess queen h3 is the idea, and uh, you can't play bishop f3 due to knight f5, mm -hmm. but I I'm not sure it's even a, a concrete threat, to be honest with you. I think... Uh, the, the white king no, is just rook c2, yeah? is escaping. Rook a2 now. Yeah, rook, rook a2 threatens checkmate, and, and I don't think black has actually made a significant threat with this rook e1 move. So white simply has time to uh, to create his own threats. Wow, queen g5 allows this check, but now queen g3 is playable. And yeah, this queen ah. comes to c2, but this is desperation that the rook any one is That's hanging. Rook, yep. This this game is over. Um, tough, tough one. Wow, so Grishik actually won. Yeah, Grishik has Fabi. defeated Fabi, and Ferugia has defeated Lenier, and we, we have a half point out of three in the final round. Not so quite what thing, we were looking thing, for. Good thing we had it secured. Yeah. <laughs> good thing we had good it thing secured. Good thing we had it secured here. With that in mind, though, I think Liam Lee Liam has developed win, this probably, position yeah. quite nicely. Liam, uh, Lequan, yeah, is going to win. Um, uh, yeah, we, we did see this knight. This is like the ideal scenario for white. The knight d did get into uh, c5. The, the pawn is still backwards on c6. There's pressure on e5, and white controls the entire d file. Um, a, a lot uh, is going well here for Liam Lee. And now a4 is, is putting some pressure on the b5 pawn. Mm -hmm. um, definitely. Uh, well, you cannot allow a5. Yeah, you, you have to take this, I think. 
so B takes A4. I guess knight A4. And C6 is hanging. And C6 is no problem. Yeah. How do you defend it? I guess bishop B7. B, B or, or B7 or D7. It's Knight so C5 uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. Very, very annoying position. Yeah. And now with the A file open, you might even see uh, one of the white rooks start to, to swing oh, over to that side. Absolutely. Uh, moves like B5 can also become a, a threat. Uh, for well, white at in some, some point, yeah, absolutely. If, if the queen is unprotected, you play b5, b6, yeah. and plant and a pawn on there. Absolutely. That's, that's close to game ending. Uh, so queen b8, and we can take c6, but then I guess bishop d7 is is black's idea. So okay. simply knight c5. Back, of course. At some point, bishop e2, and uh, rerouting the bishop to c4. Uh, yeah, it it's come. You have to make sure an, the h5 is not hanging. Kind of annoying for white that this pawn has been pushed all the way to h5. Yeah. But, uh, would be nice to get a like. Wow, what is what is this? Okay, knight d5 okay, is take, attacking the rook. Just take twice. Just take twice. And yeah. Just winning. D1 is protected. Right. And now that the queen is hit, just and B5. these two pawns are, are worth far more than. Yeah. Than just an just b5 is winning. B5, b6. Uh, the only thing is e4, I guess, to watch out for. Yeah, I, I, I don't fully believe in it. Um, so b5, I guess e4 is, okay, is the, the is concern. Fine. Now maybe f5. f5 has to be played. There's yeah. nothing else. Two seconds for Eric. So so f5 almost. with under a second on the clock. We see the bishop d5 check. And now yeah, b5 does come. And this bishop stays in the game, not getting locked out by e4. So e3 is the move to watch out here. So... Uh, I think knight a4 makes some sense to prepare b6, but I guess you do have to have a response to e3, e3 as yeah. you said. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's the way you keep the, the grip on the position? How do you... This is the uh, trick, yeah. I mean, you... Black played basically the only thing he had. Right. So I don't know if uh, we had to play this move bishop e4. I feel like we could have just played b5. Yeah, it, it's a little my bit. My plan was when e4, strange. I was just going to take everything and play queen c5 and just b6. Right. Just, just I think, win the game that way. But so uh, queen g3, uh, which, yeah, f4 is the natural response. But now queen g6. And after e3, I guess Eric is looking to, to checkmate. Okay. Yeah, perhaps this gets the job done. There, there's a check on b6 or, or a7, but simply king f1. There's no more checks. E8 is hanging. E8 is hanging, yeah. Uh, and now, uh, I mean, any number of moves wins, wins the game. Queen D6 hits the rook. Just just, yeah, just need to consolidate now. Now the queen C5. comes to C5, and where it can support the, the push of these pawns. Yes, you got to watch out for the F3. OK, so knight F2. Now we can play G4. There's no light squared checks. We cover all the squares. B6, B6 and B7, B6, is, B7 is, is coming good. at any moment. Uh, rookie one first. B6. Yeah. Uh, we see a desperate sacrifice, but simply takes. Queen, Take that queen takes, knight takes. It's all. Knight on it is there. actually, there's no checks. Yeah, of course, <laughs> the knight, uh, a perfect <laughs> defender for the king. There's no checks. Yeah. There's no checks here. Mm -hmm. The knight on F2 guards everything. And resignation. Bravo, Liam, huh? Wow, yeah, bravo. Uh, Liam Lee, uh, Liam perhaps Liam. the third MVP, with two wins and, and two, draws two draws and very key uh, matchups. Um, so that brings the, the total final score, I believe, uh, to 10 to 6 in favor of the Archbishops. And why don't we actually see the final results here on the screen? Yeah. Uh, on Plus, the boards, yeah. 1 and 2. Like we said, the chess pros yeah. board 1 and 2. They, they, the they delivered. They delivered in this yeah. round. They, so. they did their job. Uh, they beat Fabiano Caruana and Lenny Dominguez. Uh, no easy feat. Uh, Wesley So drew Ivan Sarich, and then Liam Lee uh, on board 4. That's been the story all day. Uh, boards three and four going in our direction. So we um, get 20 Liam points, right? Defeating here, Kansen. So yeah, we, we get are getting points. 20 total points at a Dwyer score. The Chess will get six. The Chess Bros will get six. Of course, that 10 point bonus for winning the match, and this will catapult us into the lead in the division standings. Um, uh, so 10 to six, the final score for the Archbishops over the Chess Bros. Perhaps we can take one more look at the current division standings and, and see where we actually stand after today. Uh, of course, yeah, twenty points for us. Twenty points is huge, and again, it was it was very very important 
Um, yeah. to so, so here we have uh, the division standings. This is what they were coming into today. So and we are at so 101.5. Yeah, 20 points for Trust us. Trust will be at 91. So we still have over 10 point lead. So we will have a 10 point lead. Now this could this lead could disappear if we slip up in these final we two rounds. We cannot slip. Yeah, that's we, the key. we do have to keep winning these matches, but it's safe to say. If we, win if we win the next two matches, yeah, if we, we will be win, first place. even with the, not a huge margin, we should be because we will be, yeah. So yeah, so a lot to look forward to in, in these last two, two weeks. Two weeks left. Yep. Yeah, uh, just need to stay consistent, get Absolutely. to that magic uh, number eight and a half in every week, in and every we week to win the match. We'll be uh, Western Division champions. Absolutely. Uh, well, Var, any final thoughts on the the games today? I thought it was a very exciting match, and I think we started really well. Especially the first two matches, we played really well. Yeah. The third and fourth, I think they started to put more pressure on us. And, you know, we got a little bit lucky, I think, in that one game that Le Kuang Leon won against um, uh, Saric. And that actually turned everything around. That was like right. it was already over. But they, they proved to be a very strong opponent. Yeah, and they, uh, they, we expected they, as much from they, the chess Yeah, press. they delivered in the last match, uh, last round, put a lot of pressure. But I think with the uh, first two round huge wins with 3-1, uh, to one, I think... Uh, there was never a doubt that we're not going to win the match. Yeah, uh, starting off 6-2 to two is always going to be uh, a, a very difficult mountain to, to surpass. And again, very difficult for the chess brothers because on the bottom boards, they did not score yeah. that, that much. Yeah, boards 3 and 4. They scored uh, actually slightly, half slightly a tough. point. They only scored 1 out of 8. Wow, yeah, that's that's not enough yeah. to uh, to win a match. 1 um, out of 8, yeah, they scored half point for Sadej, half for Eric. Yeah, so congratulations to the St. Louis Archbishops Absolutely. winning this congratulations round. Congratulations. Uh, we do week. have some exciting upcoming broadcasts here at the St. Louis Chess Club. Uh, so next week we will actually not be broadcasting the Pro Chess League because we do have the Cairns Cup. It is, of course, a 10-player round robin with $180,000 up for grabs in the prize fund. It is some of the top female players in the world, including women's world champion uh, Ju Wen Jun will be in this tournament along with some of her closest competitors in, in women's chess as well. Uh, that'll be running from February 6th to 17th, with round one starting on February 7th. Uh, those rounds start at 1 p.m. each day. And, of course, the final round uh, of the regular season for the Pro Chess League is actually on uh, the same day as the potential playoffs for the Cairns Cup. That is the 17th of February. So, if there are no playoffs in the Cairns Cup, expect to see us back here covering uh, our top four boards, hopefully again, in the final round of the, of the Pro Chess League. If there are Cairns Cup playoffs, well, you'll want to stay tuned for that as well, because that'll be very okay. exciting stuff. Um, so, thank you all very much for joining us here for this week's coverage of the Pro Chess League. The Archbishops get it done again, uh, going home champions uh, against the, the Chess Pros. Yeah. So be sure to tune in for the Cairns Cup coming up uh, very soon later in February. All right. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye bye. This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club.